We are living in this extremely wacky era right now where I used to have to say something about the old niggas. Now I got to say something about the young dudes out here committing malfeasance at a record pace here. I haven't really said anything about this guy, Marcus Jordan, son of basketball icon, legend, Michael Jordan, but most of y'all already know the deal. He's, uh, the young man is doing everything in life he possibly can to mess up at this point right now here. He, he really, really is and doesn't even see or know any better. Or maybe he's just been living in a gilded cage for so long that he's just decided what in the hell is the worst that could possibly happen here. So everyone knows the deal. He is dating Larsa Pippen, still calling herself Larsa Pippen the former wife of Scottie Pippen, Michael Jordan's former teammate. This woman is 49 years old. 49. 49. Marcus Jordan is 32 years old. 32. 32. And next thing you know here, like I say, it's just, this is what happens when you are not ready for power. This is what happens when you have not been prepared for it. Now, you all have heard a lot, and I've heard a lot of people saying a lot of things here. But there's one thing in particular I hadn't heard people say anything about because there's been a lot of gesticulation and guesstimation about exactly what's going on here. Well, there was something in particular here, and I didn't have to guess about it. I could just go to the source. They have a podcast. No, I'm not kidding. They have a podcast. The podcast is called Separation Anxiety. And the two of them have been on there. But before we go to that, because that one's already a bombshell enough, what I want to do is I want to take you over here. I want to take you over here to their Instagram. They have a Instagram for their podcast called Separation Anxiety. That shouldn't be very hard to remember. They have some clips that they put up from their podcast here. They have some clips they put up. And I just thought there were a couple of them in particular here. One clip in particular about baby talk. Is it a possibility? How how soon? How, you know? But just so you know, like, (laughs) time is clicking oh i know it's ticking and clicking so i think i was like 38 years old and i was in a relationship where i was kind of feeling like it was empty and i was kind of thinking that i need an insurance policy i was okay she was 38 years old a decade ago who was she with a decade ago when she was 38 years old you all go do the math on that Fortunately, this program here has the uh, chat room open, so you all can go do the math on that. So she's 49 now, so a a decade ago she was 38 years old. Who was she with when she was 38 years old and she was hedging her bets about having children with them? So I wonder who who was she with a decade ago? Because that's what she's saying now is a decade ago was going on. Well, she's telling you she has some reservations about it, so all right. In LA, and I was filming with the Kardashians, mm-hmm. and they were doing this whole egg retrieval thing. Mm. And so I went to the doctor with them while we were filming, and then I was like, maybe I should do it too, because what uh. happens if I end up with someone that doesn't have kids? And so I did it. I did it once, and I ended up with the 11 eggs. So you're saying we could have a whole roster, basketball roster? I mean, possibly, yes. You know, th- there's definitely um, thoughts that I'm having around, is it a possibility? How How soon? How, you know? But just so you know, like, time (laughs) is clicking. Folks, Larsa Pippen already has four kids. Let me say that one more time. This woman already has four kids. Marcus Jordan is 32 years old, getting with a woman who's 49 years old, has four kids, and already lining up the eggs. At 49, what the hell is she going to do with a pregnancy besides wish for one? And yet, they're talking about getting married and having children. Yeah, because she got to move quick. 
You know why? Because if she does mess around and get married again, man, there, there, there goes the money. There goes anything right there. You're not going to keep juicing Scotty Pippen. So that's not going to work. So she's like, Hey, I got to get another bag. I got to get another bag. And clearly she doesn't trust Marcus Jordan's financial competence. She doesn't trust him because she wants to have a podcast with the two of them. So she wants something that she can own. And so in case he's not around anymore, you notice his name is not in the title of the podcast. So it would be something that she could own and basically give him the boot. And then she can go do like call me daddy. So I can already see what she's doing. She's trying to do, run the Chris Kardashian play. She doesn't have any other men of any real stature who would stand by her or be seen with her. So she's grabbed the first dummy, low-hanging fruit she can, gas his head up, making him think he's winning when it's like, dude, take a look at the fellas she was with. Fellas, let me give you, as men, we know this and the women don't think we know this, but fellas, can we just call it out right now? Ladies, we know the deal. If the last guy you were with was a millionaire and the guy you're with now is a thousandaire, that nigga don't know you running game on him. Fellas, you need to ask your chick and get some documentation. By the way, did you have, was your last man clocking like that? How the hell did you end up down here? Oh, I'm just in love. Really? It's true love. Yes. He was too controlling and domineering and all he cared about was money. But how long was you there? 10 years. Wait a minute. Hold on. If he was, uh, he's too materialistic and too much about money and you stuck around for a decade. How many gifts you got? Oh, too many to count. He just wanted to buy anything. Buy anything. Well, it couldn't have been too damn bad. You stuck there for a decade. Yes, but I was really looking for a substandard nigga like you. Really? Come on, folks. Let's, let's not play games about that. Fella, if she sat up here and had to take a big step down like that, dude, don't you know she's looking for the next leg up? All right, fine. Believe whatever you want to. All right, so she hit him up about that. Next, she was hitting him up about um, her OnlyFans. Oh, y'all, all I can say, fellas, is brace yourselves. Maximum, we're about to reach peak simp. We're about to hit maximum simp. T minus three seconds. And would you ever want me to delete it? Because <laughs> I would. Um, no, I mean, look, I, like I said, I, I don't have an issue with it. You like it, but you don't really like it. No, I don't have a problem with it. I think as long as it makes you happy and you enjoy it, and, you know, look, I think it's a source of income for you. Like I Now, she's talking about their only, her OnlyFans. She's asking him, are you okay with my OnlyFans? Do you have a problem with my OnlyFans? And these are the answers he's giving. 32 years old, she's 49 years old. Was she Arab? That's what she said, she's an Arab chick. Her mom and dad are Arabs. And here he is, oh, oh, a, an Arab chick with OnlyFans. Dude, don't you see she's about making the dollar? Better go listen to my man WC's song. If you see a bad B, nigga, forget flowers. She respecting dollars. This fella here, is, uh, he thinks she's chosen him for his personality. Well, listen to me. I'm six foot something tall and I have a deep voice here. And yeah, I think I'm winning. I really, really do. All right. Never want to, you know, block your success or your, you know, well-being. He doesn't want to block her success at OnlyFans. All right. And so, you know, I think as long as you enjoy it and, oh, and way, use it's, it not, career, it's not good for business since I've been with you. Well, I, hey, that's not that's not <laughs> my fault. I don't blame me. I, like like you know. literally the people that write me on there are like not happy that I'm in a relationship with you. But it, it's fun. But how do you feel about my OnlyFans account? And would you ever want me to delete it? Because <laughs> I would. Um, no, I mean, look, I, like I said, I, I don't have an issue with you like Fellas, is that a laugh line? If your chick is sitting there in front of you telling you about her OnlyFans, fellas, is that a laugh line? What about my OnlyFans? Ha, 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 ha. Fellas, is, is, is that a laugh line? Because to me, they ain't very damn funny. Yes, about my OnlyFans. Do you have a problem with that? Ha, ha, ha. That doesn't seem like a damn laugh line to me. 
That doesn't seem very, like very much of a damn laugh line to me. So he's sitting there laughing about it. And I'm like, okay, dude, if your chick got an OnlyFans, somebody else has got good footage of her good and plenties while he's sitting there goofball laughing. But you don't really like it. No, I don't have a problem with it. I think as long as it makes you happy and you enjoy it, and you know, look, I think it's a source of income for you. Like, I Do you all hear this? Well, as long as it makes you happy. Okay, so if throwing them draws on the track makes her happy, do we do that too? I would never want to block your... It's a source of income for you. Wait a minute. So you are just sitting here saying, yeah, if showing yourself off for men, if that makes you money, I know you got to make some dollars at it, really? So you're going to... This is what you want to turn into a wife? Who's running this relationship? It is very obvious who is running this relationship. If you all think that Larsa is running this relationship, give me the thumbs up emoji in the chat room. If you think that Marcus is running this relationship, give me the basketball emoji in the chat room and hit the likes button for me. So for 1600 people in here in just the first 10 minutes, but if folks aren't digging the broadcast, we'll go ahead and shut it down a little bit early. But if you like tonight's program here, let YouTube hides the program. Let the folks who are watching it know that people like what they're hearing here. So hit the likes button so you can see folks are digging what we're laying down. So dude is sitting up here now and it's ha ha ha. And if it makes you income, what in the hell, bruh? She can't take some IT courses. We got to sit here and sling our 49 year old butt cheeks. Really? or whatever she's doing over there, and he's laughing about it. No man can have any self-respect when your woman is sitting up here engaging in this kind of lewd behavior. You got a lewd behavior. You done lost track of the female. She's gone. I would never want to, you know, block your success or your, you know, well-being. And so, you know, I think as long as you enjoy it and, oh, and way, use it's, it not, it's, not, it's not good for business since i've been with you well I, hey, that's not that's <laughs> not my fault i don't blame me like, I, like literally the people that write me on there are like not happy that i'm in a relationship with you but she almost 50 years old y'all she's almost 50 with an only fans at what point do you check out of the game that's what i'm trying to find out at what point do you check out of the game? At what point is the game over for you? She's 49. She's almost 50. Who the hell is she competing with with an OnlyFans? Who are you competing with? You've already got this jackass in your back pocket. Okay, fine. Well, you all, to make matters worse, they also got to talking about money. And having a joint bank account. Oh, you thought you had heard how bad it was? Don't you know you can see this train wreck incoming? This train wreck is incoming. You can see it coming from a mile away. Would you try? I like that. Two or three, yeah, two or three. I like that. Would you? Who do you think would be more responsible with that two or three million dollars? Me or you? <laughs> Just asking for a friend. That's a low. Okay, so they're talking about the bank. Uh, if they had a joint bank account together that's what they're talking about if we had a joint bank account that's what she's asking about and of course he's ready for prime time but in i don't know let's just say two million dollars okay three million dollars okay would you two, three i like that two or three yeah two or three I like that. would you who do you think would be more responsible with that two or three million dollars me or you <laughs> just asking for a friend that's the Loaded question. Yeah, I, I trust you. Okay. you. You you're very conservative when it comes to spending. Now, did you hear that? Who would you trust more, me or you? Ha 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 ha! I trust you. I want you all to understand this. If you don't, if you don't think that she knows what she's getting into, even if he doesn't, do you hear that? If we had a joint bank account with two or three million in it. Who we trust more, me or you? Ha 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 ha! I trust you. You all are hearing it directly from the horse's mouth or some other part. You spend on the right stuff, mm -hmm. you know, so I don't have to worry about, you know, 
She spends it on the right stuff. She's got a damn OnlyFans. What the hell is she spending it on? She has a OnlyFans. Michael Jordan's legacy is going up in smoke in real time. He's watching it, poof, go up in smoke right in front of his face. Michael Jordan is why this has got to be painful for the greatest basketball player of all time to witness that this will be his legacy. One and done. One generation and it's over. Okay. Cash going missing out of the account. That's not what I'm worried about. Okay, I'm, okay. I'm, you know. Yeah. Cash going missing out the account. That ain't what I'm worried about. This nigga ain't asked Scotty Pippen a damn thing, has he? He hasn't listened to a damn word Scotty Pippen had to ask. That was just it. Scotty didn't know what to do with it. Did you all hear that? I ain't worried about money coming up missing. Sir, would you like to talk to Scotty Pippen's attorney for just a couple of moments? I'll pay for the damn phone call. Do you see a hog getting fattened up for the slaughter? I ain't worried about you taking money out of the account. Oh, and that's why she's like, hurry up and sign these marriage documents. Hurry up. We'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. If we had one bank account where we both put in, I don't know, let's just say $2 million. Okay. $3 million. Okay. Would you try? three, I like that. Two or three. Yeah, two or three. I like that. Would you, who do you think would be more responsible with that two or $3 million, me or you? <laughs> just asking for a friend. That's a loaded question. Yeah, I, I trust you. Okay. You, you, you. I want to show y'all one more thing. Take a look at the, on your screen there. Take a look at his arm. I know it's a little bit small on there, but take a look at his arm. He does the whole thing here with his arm around her. She got her arms in front of her. He's got his arm all up around her. So 32 years old. And he thinks this 49 year old chick, this NBA pass around. He's acting like he done hit the jackpot. I mean, he's just proud of himself. Proud. He is making visual commitments. This is the best he thinks he can do with his dad's money and legacy. Very conservative when it comes to spending. You spend on the right stuff, mm -hmm. you know, so I don't have to worry about, you know, okay. cash going missing out of the account. That's not what I'm worried about. Okay, I'm, okay. I'm, you know, yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. Yeah, we'll get there. Oh, nigga, she's already there. She's already there. You just don't know it. So I know you all have watched a bunch of YouTube videos and seen a bunch of articles and things, but by the way, this is directly from the horse's mouths. And you can hear exactly what's going on here. Old women, young simps. The old dudes are sitting out here tricking off money left and right. Here come the young fellas now competing. This is why we have to be on code as men. This is why you got to read from the black book. This is why you have to be on top of your purpose as a man and you can't let collecting females become your purpose because then you become Marcus Jordan and a 49 year old chick can sit up here and elbow be these other better options out the way. Let's just be very, very honest about it. A 32 year old dude running after a 49 year old chick, man, look here. It, it, look, it would be one thing if he was doing the future thing and just laying up with her. Okay, if he's doing like future and just laying up with her and she's one among several, but he's making no commitment to her, man, I'd be doing the slow clap for him. It's okay, he's got some sense about him. No! Oh, trust me, folks. He's trying to marry her. He is trying to marry her. Jason, how do you know? Because when you go to their podcast, <sighs> folks, damn. Pepto, I brought my Omeprazole. Yes, sir, I got the Prilosec. Um, yeah, damn some antacid. That ain't gonna hold me. Not hearing this tonight, it won't. So I've already taken one. So we can go ahead and keep those, those acid pumps down. I've already taken one. Because I ain't gonna make it. Floating Pepto Bismol, not gonna make it. Not gonna make it. All right, on their radio program uh, on Spotify, Separation Anxiety, they did a program here recently about pricey gifts and Freudian slips. And all I can tell you is if you ever saw a guy in a boxing match 
who walked out to the middle of the ring facing his opponent with his arms behind his back and his chin poked straight out. That's Marcus Jordan. It is embarrassing to hear some of the things he's about to say. He's trying to purchase her affection. He's trying to purchase her respect, all while claiming he's not. She's basically telling him what she's going to do. In this program here, she's basically going to tell him what she's going to do. And he's going to be like, ha, 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 I did. I mean, he's like, he thinks he got a dime. Okay, Marcus. All right. See, and a whole myriad of things, but let's jump into it, babe. Okay, I'm ready. Let's go. So Katie Thurston from season 17 of The Bachelorette says she gifted her then boyfriend, John Hershey, of a new van prior to their breakup. The couple had been dating for six months. Mm-hmm. They were living together when he broke up with her. He was a bartender and aspiring pilot and eventually paid her back for the van, but it took a long time because it was expensive. Mm-hmm. Now Katie says she'll never buy a man a present of that caliber again. And so, well, babe, what is the most expensive gift you've bought your significant other? I think when you're married and when you're dating, it's two different things. Okay, so talk about it. Let's- oh, boy. Well, isn't that something? I think when you're dating versus when you're married, it's different. Okay, go ahead and tell me what it is, dude. All right. This bomb is incoming. Let me go ahead and roll that back one more time because I want you to hear that example he just gave, how it led here. Tales. You and your dog are close. And we're back with another episode of Separation Anxiety. I'm your host, Marcus Jordan. And I'm Larsa Pippen. And today we're talking life and love with Larkus. I love that. We're talking a little bit about spending habits, talking a little bit about jealousy and a whole myriad of things, but let's jump into it, babe. Okay, I'm ready. Let's go. So Katie Thurston from season 17 of The Bachelorette says she gifted her then boyfriend, John Hershey, of a new van prior to their breakup. The couple had been dating for six months. Mm -hmm. They were living together when he broke up with her. He was a bartender and aspiring pilot and eventually paid her back for the van, but it took a long time because... Now, did you hear that? So they're talking about somebody from one of these reality shows... She gifted her boyfriend a van and then said that he paid her back for the van. All right. So she gifted him a van, just a van. I'll be damned. Not a Bentley, not an Aston Martin, a van, probably a Mercedes Sprinter van. And it was supposed to be a gift and he paid her back for the, so She gave the van to him as a gift, and now he's going to pay her for it? That's not a gift. That's a purchase. But listen to how she, how Larsa Pippen addresses it. It was expensive. Mm -hmm. Now Katie says she'll never buy a man a present of that caliber again. And so, babe, what is the most expensive gift you've bought your significant other? I think when you're married and when you're dating, it's two different things. Okay, so talk about it. Let's talk about so it. So I think that like when you're dating someone, mm-hmm. you there's like parameters. Like you really shouldn't buy them a car. Yeah, I feel like. I mean, I, I look, I'm not going to say it like that. I guess I shouldn't say it like that because okay. I have gotten cars. You've gotten cars. You've gotten. Well, well, ain't that something? Okay. I think if you're dating, you shouldn't buy them a car. Well, I mean, uh, I mean, I've gotten a car. Really? Okay, that's real interesting right there. Real interesting. Oh, oh, you shouldn't buy them a car unless it's me. Well, yes, he can buy me a car. I mean, I've gotten cars, plural. Okay, just wanted to point that out. You've received a lot of gifts. I feel like... I'm saying for a girl, like I feel like it's a woman. Like parameters. Like you really shouldn't buy them a car. Yeah, I feel like... I mean, I, I look, I'm not going to say it like that. I guess I shouldn't say it like that because okay. I have gotten cars. You've gotten cars. You've gotten... You've received a lot of gifts. I feel like... I'm saying for a girl. Like, I feel like okay. as a woman, okay. I would not buy my boyfriend a car. However, you I have had buying guys buying me cars. Okay. So I guess it's kind of like... Did you all hear that? See, this is the, this is the kind of desperate, down and out loser... And Marcus is just, I mean, this is loser mentality. You shouldn't buy a man anything. You a woman. Did you all hear him say that? Did you hear him say that? Do you think that she chose this brain dead idiot out of nowhere? 
Did you hear what he just said? You, like, Steve Harvey, you shouldn't buy nothing. You, you the woman. She's 49 years old, dunce. Because okay. I have gotten cars. You've gotten cars. You've gotten, you've received a lot of gifts. I feel like. I'm saying for a girl. Like, I feel like okay. as a woman, okay. I would not buy my boyfriend a car. However, I you have had buying guys buying me cars. Okay. So I guess it's kind of like. You shouldn't buy anything as a woman. Can't y'all see his strategy for getting females? He really thinks that females dig him for his personality. He doesn't understand. Dude, in the celebrity world, the word is already out. In the celebrity world, they know every trick and his son. They know every trick and every trick's simping ass son. So he's in it as a woman. You shouldn't pay for anything. And he think he's literally sitting here telling himself that that the females don't hear that philosophy from mile away. That the word isn't out everywhere about him. That hey, trick over here. He thinks that the women just love him. And he thinks that Larsa Pippen is that he's really being a stand up man. And Larsa Pippen just love you for your attitude about life. And this is what a real man do. So you got to work this damn hard to get a 40, 49 year old toss up. And he's just sitting here breaking his arm, patting himself on the back. Because okay. I have gotten cars. You've gotten cars. You've gotten, you've received a lot of gifts. I feel like. I'm saying for a girl, like I feel like okay. as a woman, okay. I would not buy my boyfriend a car. However, I you have had buying guys buying me cars. Okay. So I guess it's kind of like. Uh, you talk about it from the woman's perspective. I'll talk about it from the man's okay, perspective. I, okay. So from a woman's perspective, I don't think that I would buy a man a car. If, if you're he's just, just dating, my boyfriend. No. Just, okay. I think if you're my husband, then we we share everything. You know, you can right. I can give you whatever you want. You're going to give me whatever I want. Whoa. Hold on now. Now, did you all catch that? If we're dating, I don't think I would. I wouldn't buy you a car. Now, if you were my husband, we share everything. Folks, will someone please tell me how many $300,000 cars Larsa Pippen bought Scotty? Will someone tell me how many $300,000 cars Larsa Pippen bought Scotty Pippen? Somebody tell me how many she did. I can show you the five my box that Kim Kardashian bought Kanye. And I think she might have bought him an expensive car too, but she didn't buy him five. So she says, when we're dating, I wouldn't buy you a car. Now I've had men who bought me a car. I've had several who bought me cars. I would never buy you one. Fellas, how many of you are such brainless, luckless clueless super ass kissers that you are just so shamelessly hopelessly desperate for female company that you would hear a female say something like this to you that she would immediately emasculate you and say thanks for buying me a car i would never buy one for you hey marcus you can buy me a car i would never buy one for you I'd never buy you one. Fellas got to understand when you're hearing nonsense like that, when you got a female who's literally looking you in your face and telling you, I want you to treat me better than I treat you. That some fellas just cuck themselves. How the hell are you cucking? How are you becoming a cuck and she doesn't even have another man? How is it she's the only person in the room and you're cucking yourself? She's literally sitting there saying, I wouldn't buy a car. And if we got married, well, we would share the car. We would share them. Well, if we're dating, I wouldn't buy you one. Okay, but she's just admitted that she's accepted cars from other people that she has dated after she divorced her husband. Well, um, you know, uh, well, if we, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't buy you a car. Fellas. Ladies, I got to read your mail right quick. Fellas, this is female psychology. This is female psychology. If a man devalues himself, if a man is willing to trick, she going to let you trick. 
if you tell her that the price for you, you, she can get maximum benefits and minimum effort, she is going to take maximum benefits with minimum effort. That's female nature. If you let her run the tables, she gonna run the tables. That's just it. Fellas, if you place your price where it's supposed to be, you can maintain that. But if you sit up here and tell her that she can just get away with murder, she's going to bring the OJ knife. That's what she's going to do. And Larsa is an old head at this game. So she's like, she's putting her pimp hand strong down on him and just telling him, oh, I'm not going to do any of that. Do you understand what you're hearing here? She's the one holding frame. He is in her frame. She's not in his frame. He's in her frame. And she is exploiting it like a son of a gun. From a woman's perspective, I'll talk about it from the man's okay, perspective. I, okay, so from a woman's perspective, I don't think that I would buy a man a car. If, if you're he's just, just my dating. boyfriend. If no. Just, okay. I think if you're my husband, then we we share everything. You know, you can right. I can give you whatever you want. You're gonna give me whatever I want. But okay. I think as a a woman, I don't I just think like men give better gifts than women, I think. Well, I think you know, for okay, now did you hear that? As a woman, I think that men give better gifts. So far, she ain't offering to give any. She's not offering to give any gifts. She's letting you know, yeah, I don't really think I have to do anything. I don't think I have to do anything. I don't think I have to do anything. I think that's fine by me. Just, I don't think I have to do anything. She's letting you know what she's going to do. She's letting you know what she's going to do. I don't have to do anything. I'm here to accept unearned benefits, preferential treatment, exploitation. I'm here to accept that from you. I'm not here to give you anything. And he said, no, all right, that's good. I ain't got to take nothing here. Hey, baby, can I take some pictures with you on the beach? Mind if we, mind if we go to the beach? As long as I get to take some pictures here with your 49-year-old used up, run through, retread. Why so? I'm so always happy to do that there. All right. He's a waste of affluence, a complete and total waste of it. For a man, you know, oftentimes... That's your way of trying to, you know, get noticed or, you know, hook in your 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 girl that you're dating, you know. And so there's been times where I've spent, you know, an abnormal amount of money on trying to impress somebody or get. Oh, you don't say y'all. I'm so shocked and surprised. I am absolutely shocked and surprised to hear that Marcus Jordan has blown a bunch of money on some females. I'm so su surprised to hear that. Shocked. Even though I was telling you all before, by the way, that's the way he gets down. I'm so shocked to hear that. Really, I am. Somebody Get somebody's attention to, you know, get noticed or, you know, hook in your, your, your girl that you're dating, you know? And so there's been times where I've spent, you know, an abnormal amount of money on trying to impress somebody or get somebody get somebody's attention, I'll say. Oh, okay. Um, and so I, I wouldn't say I bought any cars, but I've gifted some things that were, you know, as expensive as cars for sure. I'm um, sure. Then what's the damn difference? I haven't bought anything as expensive as car. I haven't bought anything. I haven't bought a car. He said he doesn't. Was, I haven't exactly bought a car. I bought some things as expensive as a car. What's the damn difference? As far as the hit you done took, folks, what I'm telling you is that he would have been better off buying a, financing a $100,000 car than to go buy a chick a $100,000 watch or a $100,000 purse or a $100,000 necklace or a $50,000 one. But he is openly admitting that he has paid bags of money just to quote, get a female's attention. Normal amount of money on trying to impress somebody or get somebody get somebody's attention, I'll say. Yeah, there you go. I spent a bunch of money just to get their attention. 
This is how easy a trick he is. He ain't just a trick, he's an easy trick. And then he wonders how he ended up with Larsa Pippen slithering up next to him. Oh, okay. Um, and so I, I wouldn't say I bought any cars, but I've gifted some things that were, you know, as expensive as cars for sure. I'm um, sure. And so I feel like you, like, I feel like you spent a lot of money on my birthday. I, I spend a lot of money on you every day, baby, <laughs> but I mean, yeah. You're- okay. Okay, folks, I'm just bringing you the news. If y'all want to know the part that your favorite YouTubers and everybody else is not talking about, this is the part that nobody has said to you all, by the way. This is what he's saying. I spend plenty of money on you all the time. And then you wonder why all of a sudden she's telling you all it's true love. She's sitting up here with this fella. And he's sitting up, I spend money on you all the time. It's true love. It's true love. Baby, I don't understand. What's the problem here? It's true love. You, you, does anybody see anything here that sounds to be a bit suspicious to you? I, I spend money on you every day. I spend plenty of money. I, I, I spend, you spend a lot of money on me. My birthday, look, gassing his head up. Fellas, okay, listen to me. Guys, there's a lot of you out there who are dealing with dumbass disease. Let me go ahead and explain something to you. When a female's only compliment to you is what you have bought her, that's not a compliment. Fellas, too many of you are too slow. You hear a female talk about, oh, he bought me this, or oh, he took me there. And I'm not saying that she shouldn't acknowledge that. What I'm saying is you need to take a look back. If the only time that your woman compliments you is when she receives benefits from you, when she receives tangible benefits, that's the only compliment you get. She doesn't compliment your superior intellect with specific examples. She doesn't compliment your superior social skills with specific examples. She doesn't compliment you on problems that you solved, not her screwed up financial issues that she got herself into, not the four or five bastard kids that she had that you came swinging through the jungle like Tarzan to come save her from the messes she made of her life. If she's not talking about the things that you have done in your life as your purpose and how she admires that and puts and shows that 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 puts you above other men. See, hold it, hold it up publicly so other men can say whether or not that's a real accomplishment or whether or not she bull jiving. If she hasn't done that, fella, if she's complimenting you on the benefits you dropped off and playing Santa Claus, that's not a compliment that's gassing your head up. So that you'll continue doing more. That's like stroking a puppy on the head. So you'll continue doing more. The only time you get a kind word or a compliment. The only time. The only thing she admires about you is your ability to drop off gifts and benefits. And save her from her own screwed up behavior. That's the only time you get a real compliment. She doesn't do that. If a woman is not telling you about how she was going down the wrong road and you corrected her and she was pleased to have a man who was able to do that, a man who's not afraid to upset her, a man who's not afraid to tell her that she's wrong, a man who's not afraid to lead, fellas, she's not, that's not a compliment. That's not a compliment. That's a sucker, not a compliment. And a bunch of fellas out there are so damn myopic they actually get fooled into thinking that that's a compliment. All The only thing she's complimenting him on is the money he spends on her. Dude, don't you see? You here to take Scotty's place. Um, and so I, I wouldn't say I bought any cars, but I've gifted some things that were, you know, as expensive as cars for sure. I'm um, sure. And so I feel like you like, I feel like you spent a lot of money on my birthday. I spend a lot of money on you every day, but <laughs> I mean, yeah, your birthday. Yeah, I just wanted to make it special for you. You know, again, I think you put a lot of value into those type of sentimental dates and moments and stuff like that. Um, but, you know.
fellas, did I just call it or did I just call it? Because I feel you put a lot of value into those sentimental dates, plural. So in other words, when he gives her things, she becomes extra affectionate. What she's done is nonverbal training. Fellas, I've been trying to teach you about that. This is nonverbal training. And every female in here knows that she's practiced in the dark sexual arts of nonverbal training. That you ration out and dole out the niceness and the kindness and the sensitivity. So you're training him. So that he starts to recognize, well, you know, she's usually kind of distant, but when I, when, if I take her to a nice place and we have a good time and all of a sudden she loosens up. So she's trained you for that response that in order to get her to loosen up, you need to do more. So in other words, you are not enough. That's what Marcus Jordan is saying. But more importantly, that's what Larsa Pippen is saying. You're not enough. I need more. So I'm training you non-verbally to see my responses. So if you want to get this type of response from me, then now you recognize the way to get it. You got to drop benefits. You got to drop gifts. You have to acknowledge days. If there are no days to acknowledge, you got to make up some. She's training him to respond that way. And by the time it's over, remember Jason Black's first rule of salesmanship the number one rule of salesmanship convince the customer that the decision to buy was theirs and not yours. If you're selling something to someone, you got to first convince the customer that the decision to make this purchase was their decision and not something that you maneuvered them into or that you led them into or that you influenced them to do. Because, of course, once a person realizes they've been influenced, they start to resist. You got to make them own the decision. You've got to make them feel like this was their call. Once they do, they'll be doing it on a regular basis. Hell, they'll be fighting you to do it because they feel that this came from their heart and not yours. I feel like you spent a lot of money on my birthday. I, I spend a lot of money on you every day. But, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, your birthday. Yeah, I just wanted to make it special for you. You know, again, I think you put a lot of value into those type of sentimental dates and moments and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, I, I feel like every day I'm, I'm trying to take things up a notch. And so I do feel like, you know, as a guy, there is, you know, after you started dating or whatever, your boyfriend, girlfriend, I feel like there's a scale of like time spent together versus price and value of the gift. I feel like over time, you constantly have to outdo yourself, mm -hmm. you know? So if you start off with a million dollar gift by year five of the relationship, you're up to $5 million in gifts. Wow. I, am I wrong? Yeah. You know? And so I, I just think that there's a double standard when it comes to guys gifting versus girls gifting. Well, you know, my mom taught me this and she said, you know, what's the most important gift anyone can Did you hear that? Folks, these are the chronicles of a professional simp. These are the chronicles of a professional simp. Did you hear that? And then you wonder why she's made a beeline and tackled him around the ankles. Scale of, you know, I, I feel like every day I'm, I'm trying to take things up a notch. And so I do feel like, you know, as a guy, there is, you know, after you started dating or whatever, your boyfriend, girlfriend, I feel like there's a scale of like time spent together versus price and value of the gift. I feel. OK, now remember that he said time spent together versus price and value of the gift. OK, but do you recognize what he's describing? He means time spent with her, not her time spent with him. So what she's conditioned Donald dumbass to believe is that her time is worth much, much more than is. Not only is her time worth much, much more, her time has a dollar value on it. Now you all understand, you remember that I've taught you all that Rolo Tomasi and crew talking about, uh, you want your interactions 
to be validational, not transactional. Well, all relationships are transactional. That's true, but not all relationships are mercenarial and commercial. Yes, all relationships between human beings are transactional, this for that. No one shows up for a relationship with someone of any kind expecting not to get anything. No one does that. So yes, all relationships are transactional, but all relationships are not commercial and mercenarial and exploitative. Now that's what they're not. And when you've got a relationship or a situation with the person that you're with, it has mercenarial requirements and commercial requirements. That's when you're supposed to have a light bulb go on and say, okay, problem. A woman's time isn't worth more than a man's time is. As a matter of fact, I would tell you that a man's time is worth more than a woman's time because the man has no expectation that the time he spends with a woman that she's going to sacrifice in order to upgrade him. But a woman has an automatic expectation and assumption that her time spent with a man is going to upgrade her. Therefore, a man's time is obviously more valuable because the benefits that you receive from an hour of his time far outweigh the benefits that you'll receive from an hour of her time. You can get sex anywhere. It's limited where you're going to get upgraded. It's limited where you're going to get gamed up. It's limited where you're going to get taken to the next level. It's limited when you have a competent man, a man who saves you money for making dumb decisions, a man who saves you time by guiding you up the right route. That's valuable. And that's not something that a woman, that's not something a man is expecting from a woman. A man does not expect guidance from a woman and he doesn't think less of her if she's unable to guide him. But a woman thinks less of you if you don't have leadership. And when she realizes you don't have leadership, she's like, oh, well, don't worry. Let me fatten you up and use you, which is what they do to men that they do not respect. Drop off the benefits. This is a heist. So needless to say, he is reading every chapter and verse from the simp handbook. He's basically got a billboard over his head that says, use me. Like over time, you constantly have to outdo yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you start off with a million dollar gift by year five of the relationship, you're up to five million dollars in gifts. Wow. Jason, you keep stopping it here because there's so many parts I need to stop. But you all can look this episode up on Spotify if you want to go back and listen to it. Okay, let me go ahead and debunk that little thing he just said. Year one, if you're giving a million dollars in gifts, and this tells you what kind of mindset he's dealing with, there goes the family fortune. By year five, it should be five million dollars in gifts. Fellas, here's the problem with that. Year one... Let's just say, for example, you spend a million dollars on her because she's giving you a million dollars of femininity. Fellas, year five, you're giving her five million dollars in, in benefits? Okay, is she giving you five million dollars worth of femininity after five years? Is she giving you that after five years? That's my question. Fellas, you're, you're giving her more as time goes on. That's my point. That's my point. She's giving you more as time goes on. Is she giving you more? Because if that's not the case, that's a different matter. 
That's a different matter. Fellas, you're paying more as time goes on. Year five, you're paying five times as much. Are you getting five times the female that you were getting in year one? This is a tough question for fellas to ask themselves. Fellas, we better start asking ourselves this because this is what females say. This is why I don't have very many females commenting in the chat room right now. The ladies are like, damn, Jason, that, that was a little bit of a left hook to the ribs. Ladies, we got to tell the truth. Ladies, we got to tell the truth. We got to tell the truth. Year five, you're paying five times as much to get the same female that you had and the exact same amount of benefits you received in year one. That's the exact same amount that you're receiving in year five, but you've been conditioned to say, I got to compete even harder and even more for the exact, not even the same female. You've got depreciation. In Marcus's case, Marcus is grabbing the depreciation that Scotty the mileage that Scotty ran up and Future ran up and a gang of other niggas, maybe even his dad. Oh, I don't want to really want to go there. We don't really want to go there with that one, do we? We, we probably going to stay away from that one. We're probably going to stay away from that one. But I'm just saying, y'all know full damn well niggas done rolled the tires, brakes, and rotors off of that. He's coming along for her He's still in his prime and he's coming and grabbing her off the damn discount bin. He's grabbing her straight off the clearance rack. Talking about how every year she can expect him to pay more and more. Why the hell wouldn't she take that deal when she's on her damn last leg? Why wouldn't she? He's telling you. He's sitting here telling her, hey, every year I'm going to do more and more. Oh, you're just so great, Marcus. You just know how to treat a woman. I sure do, baby. Nothing like your ex-husband and the rest of them lames out there who don't really know how to value you. I am I wrong? Yeah. This is yes, you're wrong. Value. Yes. Are you wrong? Yes, nigga, you dead wrong. Of the gift. I feel like over time, you constantly have to outdo yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you start off with the million dollar gift by year five of the relationship, you're up to five million dollars in gifts. Wow. I am I wrong? Yeah. You know, and so I, I just think that there's a double standard when it comes to guys gifting versus girls gifting. Well, you know, my mom taught me this and she said, you know, what's the most important gift anyone can ever give you? What's that? Time. I agree with that. Because I feel like time is something when someone gives you their time it's more valuable than a there, gift there's a lot of women out there though that i feel like are spending time with you know a deadbeat dude and they're looking for other the other types of gifts am i wrong why can't you get both wow now did you hear that did you see how quickly that flipped did you hear how quickly that flipped did you hear that did you all see how quick she just flipped that she just sat there and said, oh, but you know, the most important gift that you can get is time. And then did you hear how his dumb ass responded? So he responded by trying to throw other men under the bus. He responded by trying to throw other men under the bus. You have to understand, females recognize that is the, the dregs of simp behavior. See, the problem is these other men, they deadbeats. How, what makes them deadbeats, man? What makes a man a deadbeat? And if it's not the same thing that makes a female a deadbeat, then you need to stop using words you don't know the meaning of. Whatever makes a man a deadbeat should be the same thing that makes a female a deadbeat. If it doesn't, you don't need to use that word. So he's trying to raise his value with a 49-year-old cast off by talking about other men and downing other men because if they don't trigger it off, he's a deadbeat without defining the parameters of what that is. But notice what she said. 
Did you notice what she said there? She said that the most important thing you can give is your time. Because I feel like time is something when someone gives you their time, it's more valuable. When it comes to guys gifting versus girls gifting. Well, you know, my mom taught me this and she said, you know, what's the most important gift anyone can ever give you? What's that? Time. I agree with that. Okay. You say you agree with that and she just, the most important gift you can give is time. That's very interesting because that's a head fake and a gaslighting that females pull on fellas all the time. Only when you got the bag. When the man wants to say that, hey, because I got the bag, I, I got status and I got the leverage. They try to gaslight you. It's not that important. The most important thing you can give me is your time. Fellas, when a woman says that, how about this, ladies? The next time you all start saying things like that, the next time you want to tell a fella here that, oh, well, the most important thing that you can give me is your time. Well, you know what? From now on, I'm going to tell you, we depend on money in this relationship too much. I've been depending on money and productivity to demonstrate my affection for you for too much. So going forward, instead of giving you a million dollars of gifts, I'm going to instead start giving you a million dollars worth of my time. Hey, ladies, to all the females listening right now, from now on, the man that you're with, you insist on money too much, way too much. We, the most important gift that a man can give you is his time. That's the most important gift he can give you is his time. So going forward, you will no longer receive $15,000 in gifts, $5,000 in gifts. You will now receive $100 in gifts and $1,400, $900 in time. You'll instead get $100 in gifts and $1,400 of time. Oh, the ladies don't like that one. They're like, hey, wait a minute, where the damn gifts go? Ladies, but time is the most important gift that a man can give you, correct? So if you're going to say that, what I'm saying is keep that energy. Keep that energy. There's a chick I knew, crazy about the little thing, dark skin, little cute thing, a little narcissistic. Everything's okay. She starts to get a case of insecurity, and next thing you know, is money doesn't mean I, I would just like just be nice to me. And okay, well, all right. Well, somebody else needs these. Resort and spa things. Let me take that over there. All right, that went over like a lead, like a cinder block on a balloon. Yeah, everybody likes to tell you that until you say, oh, okay, well, let me do something else. Then all of a sudden, the problem is you. I'm like, keep that energy. If financial productivity and financial excellence are not important, you need to hold the line there. If time is the most important thing, then I shouldn't see more money, more value in money spent than value in time. I shouldn't see that. If time is the most important thing, we need to maximize the time. So instead of taking you places or spending things or giving you mementos, we need to instead focus on giving you more top quality time. That's what we need to do now. We need to focus on maximizing your time benefits. And if we can do that, the next thing you know, everything's great. That's what we need. We need that. So clearly, I want y'all to listen to what Larsa said there. Time is the most important thing. Then she turns right around and says, why? When he says, yeah, but you know, there's fellas out there that give you the time and not the money. Why can't I have both? Didn't she just contradict herself? Folks, if she just contradicted herself, where she says time is the most important thing, and then she says, when he says, well, yeah, let's pull back on the money. Oh, well, can't we have both? Well, d didn't that just reveal that she's full of garbage and that it really is about the money?
like it always is. It together versus price and value of the gift. I feel like over time, you constantly have to outdo yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you start off with a million dollar gift, by year five of the relationship, you're up to five million dollars in gifts. Wow. Am I wrong? Yeah. You know, and so I, I just think that there's a double standard when it comes to guys gifting versus girls gifting. Well, you know, my mom taught me this and she said, you know, what's the most important gift anyone can ever give you? What's that? Time. I agree with that. Because I feel like time is something when someone gives you their time, it's more valuable than a the, gift. There's a lot of women out there, though, that I feel like are spending time with, you know, a deadbeat dude and they're looking for other, the other types of gifts. Am I wrong? Why can't you get both? Why can't I mean, sometimes the guy don't have it like that, you know, so he's like, look, I'm gonna give you all the time I got in the world. But, you know, we we struggling, we grinding together, you know, so he might not be able to buy that five thousand dollar bag or something like that. So in that scenario, is that you would you still date that guy? I think so. If he was grinding toward did you now did you all heard that? Now, she just lying through her teeth now. Now, I can't respect a female who will just look you in the face and lie through her teeth. Well. I think so. With every man knowing damn well she is lying her ass off. She couldn't just sit there and be honest and just say, no, I couldn't. Take a look at all the men I've been with. All the men I've been with before you, Marcus, were multimillionaires and caked up. All of them I've been with before now. I ain't never had to fall back. Next thing you know, here this goes. So she just sat there and told a damn bald-faced lie. Could you be with a man who gave him a cut bag on it like that? Could you be with a man who was working and grinding and couldn't get you the nicest? I think so. Think so. This ain't no think situation. You're almost 50 years old. You already know if you could do that or not. She's like, I'm 50. I'm going on 50 years old. I can't take no L time i got in the world but you know we we struggling we grinding together you know so he might not be able to buy that five thousand dollar bag or yeah something like that so is in that scenario is that you would you still date that guy i think so if he was grinding towards something i think so i think that like i think like if someone makes you feel good and they make you happy then that's like more important than any gift i don't think i don't think so i feel i feel like you know, again, I think we talked about this on our last episode. I, I like, like, you I you like up, a boss. You know what I'm I saying? I like a boss, but I also grew up. My dad gave me everything. Of course. My dad. Wow. Okay. So, so far, no, I, I like a boss, but my dad gave me everything. First of all, ladies, let me just help you all for the rest of your damn lives right here. We don't give a damn about your damn daddy. We don't care about your damn daddy none of us ladies let me just go ahead and lay that down right now none of us are sitting up here trying to figure out how to compete with your freaking daddy we don't care what that nigga did there's not a one of us who's sitting at home tonight. Ooh, boy. You know, her dad used to do this right here. Uh, you know, I got to compete against that. The hell I do. No, I don't. You know why? Because there isn't a single female listening to me live or recorded here or anywhere else who's sitting around saying, you know what? Uh, let me figure out what Jason Black's mama was doing for him. And let me see if I can outdo her. You always sit up here and say that man is devoid of manhood. You would say that he's devoid of manhood. If they said that. That's what you would be saying. You'd be saying that they're devoid of manhood. You wouldn't be saying that that's a positive. You'd be saying who in the hell is this butt broken nigga think I'm gonna sit up here and compete with his damn mama. If you like your mama so much. You need to go marry your mama. That's what the females would say. Well, ladies, I'm like, you know what? You're actually on to something. You're actually on to something. Yeah, if that's the way it is for the men, that's the way it is for the women. Ladies, we don't want to hear about your damn daddy. I don't know what makes you all think that impresses us. Here's the problem. What if I think your daddy is a punk? What if I think your daddy is a simp? What if I think your daddy is weak? What if, what then? 
Just because you grew up with him doesn't mean that he was a paragon of masculinity. That's just the dude you grew up with. Just because he's your dad and you respect and admire him, that don't mean I do. That doesn't mean I respect and admire him. I'm dating you. I ain't dating him. I'm laying up with you. I ain't laying up with him and never will. I'm not trying to sit up here and admire him. If it happens, okay, I guess it happens. But the bottom line is, ladies, I, for any of you who think, okay, here's the trump card. See, the problem is there are a bunch of beta simp ass dudes out there. And they pass around these dumbass memes. There are these stupid ass memes that have gone around all this time with some of these buck broken jackasses taking memes with their daughters, talking about what they're going to do for their daughters so that they ain't got to worry about your son not knowing her value. That's how your daughter ends up single by herself or with a bunch of bastard kids by dudes who make her feel differently than you ever did. And those guys, the fellas doing that with their daughters, you ain't a, f a man that the females are trying to get with anyway. That's the killing part about it. They're not hurting themselves to be with you anyway. And yet, and yet, that's what they're doing. So ladies, some of y'all grew up with fathers who sat up here and did the My Little Pony and, 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 and the Little Miss Bakery thing with you. And so you done grown up as daddy's little date. And he done gassed your head up with some absolutely erroneous information. Look here, baby girl. If you meet a man... And he don't do for you at least what I did for you. You don't need to be with him. And some of you dumb clucks done sat up here and walked your big ass out here into the world. That's right. Daddy told me if the if a man don't do for me at least what he did, then I ain't got to do nothing. I, I don't need him if he ain't going to do for me at least what my daddy did. So you walked into the world literally looking for a second daddy and then getting upset and offended when none of us are competing or chomping at the bit to be him. Ladies, put that little damn thing back in your ass pocket. No man of worth any salt out here is impressed when you talk about what your daddy did for you. Let me tell y'all something. I've had a couple of girlfriends who told me that their dad, when they got in the car, their dad opened the door for them. Don't you know I stopped opening doors the very next day? First of all, I'm not a big opening door guy, my, to be honest with you. I'm like, we wasting time. That's an extra six seconds. We could have been gone. So I'm not big on that to begin with. Now, if it's a nice restaurant or something, okay, fine. But as far as we leaving Toys R Us, what the hell I got to open the door for you for? You got two working arms. We're at Toys R Us, damn it. What the hell you talking about? I get brownie points at Toys, Toys R Us for what? I need a broad who can open the door on her own. How the hell do you get in your car by yourself? Jason, did you just say that? I damn sure did. I damn sure did. What the hell? Makes no damn sense. Damn that. Always somebody trying to gaslight you. Hell no. After that, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Your daddy opened the door for you all this time? No wonder you're single and unmarried. Uh, let me show you how a door latch works. Let me show you how a car door handle works. I'm about to make you a more capable individual. I'm about to make you a more capable female. I see I'm going to have you call up when I open up the phone lines. I'm so glad you think that. I see you're going to call up when I open up the phone lines. No, I'm not joking. I'm very glad you expressed that sentiment. We need to deal with that. We need to deal with that. We damn sure are. Because we have a bunch of females out here today 
They want to move by these arbitrary 21st century standards they made for themselves. So on the one hand, they tell you, I don't want to grow up like my grandmama did and how she was treated. And then every time the men turn around, I need somebody going to treat me like my grandmama got treated. So we're going to deal with this tonight here about, by the way, what are these standards that we are invoking? We, we, we're having a teaching moment. We're having a teaching moment, but ladies, this thing that gets held over men's heads and used like a damn baseball bat to beat them to death. Every time you turn around, it's like, okay, so you're not a man. You're not a man unless you're demonstrating some subservience. Oh, throw me your money. Open doors. It's always this really lopsided thing. And then I'm, I'm telling the fellas, stop letting folk exploit you. Take a look at her side of the ledger and tell me, does what she's done on her side of the ledger, does that equal what she's asking for? Or is she trying to maneuver you into subversion and submissiveness? You went from leading in the relationship to all of a sudden your time and your world revolves around making sure that she feels like the damn princess from Cinderella. Okay, but are you being treated like the prince? She's getting treated like a princess. I don't see no dudes out here getting treated like princes. But the females sure know how to walk through the door demanding princess treatment. And then telling you, ooh, that's so sexy. You know what's so sexy? A female who knows how to change the brakes on my truck. You know what, Icy? You know what would be sexy to me? Is a female who knows how to change the oil pump on my Escalade. That would be nice. Hadn't seen that, though. Still waiting. Have a whole bunch of chicks swear they know how to do car repair. Ain't met the first one knows how to turn the wrench, the socket wrench to the left or the right. But by the way, if you know how to swap out a set of motor mounts, I'd sure like that. If you can change a serpentine belt. You know what? Jason thinks that's sexy too. A little bit of oil grease while you're wearing them Daisy Dukes. A little bit of oil grease on your thighs. Jason thinks that's sexy too. Jason can't get that kind of sexiness. As soon as I say that, she's over there in the corner trying to dial up the number for Firestone. Oh, so only your version of sexy counts. All right, fine. All right. Fellas, y'all better take notice. You better take notice. Makes you feel good and they make you happy, then that's like more important than any gift. I don't think I don't think so. I really? feel I feel like you know, again, I think we talked about this on our last episode. I, I like like you I you like up, a boss. You know what I'm I saying? I like a boss, but I also grew up my dad gave me everything. Of course. My dad always gave me gifts. My dad took As me on should. shopping sprees, like and ask your ex husband what kind of woman your father produced. Why don't we ask your ex-husband and your ex-boyfriends exactly what quality of female your father produced? That's the part she doesn't want to talk about. By the way, what quality of woman did you turn out to be? While you're talking about what your daddy did for you, I know that you're not saying anything about, by the way, let me tell you about the quality of woman I became. Let's call up my ex-husband and let him, an objective individual, testify to the quality of my character as a woman, the quality that my father built into me. So for me, love, like if you want to show me love, you give me things sometimes. Like yeah. I like it. But at the same time, like I have my mom who's the total opposite. And well, my mom tells me that like these things are not going to make you happy, Larsa. I feel like, look, there was maybe a point in your life. If these things are not going to make you happy, then why do you keep insisting that you must have them? At what point do you have enough things and you tell the fellow, well, from now on, we just going to coast. We just going to coast. You notice they never say that. They never say, okay, I have enough things from here on in. We just going to coast on love. It's like, oh no, you got to keep producing. You know why, fellas? Because gifts are a woman's trophies. Fellas, you are never going to get this out of them any more than they're going to get that out of you. That is what it means to be a competitive person. Competitive people 
keep trophies. Competitive people keep mementos. Competitive people keep trophies and and have game on their mantles. Competitive people keep those. Well, guess what? That's why women keep gifts from men. This is my trophy from Brad, and this is my trophy from Bill, and this is my trophy from Charles. Oh, and this one over here is my trophy from George. And out there in the garage, that's my trophy from Scotty. That is a woman's trophy case. That's how a woman keeps score of trophies. So if you want to know why they matter, fellas, you ain't never going to get around that. You can't get a woman to divorce herself from the idea that she should have her version of trophies any more than we can divorce you from the idea that you should have your championship medals or your championship trophies. If you got a moose's head or something, do we have our trophies? The women got theirs. Those are their trophies. That's how they mark their milestones. The ladies in the chat room talking about Jason telling the business. The fellas didn't know this. They've been listening to Rolo Tomasi and Fresh and Misfit all this damn time and didn't know how the female psyche actually works. I'm just telling them stop trying to fight female psychology. First understand it and then use it like judo. Take the momentum and use it in your to your advantage. But you first got to understand what the momentum is. You're not going to divorce her from wanting trophies. What you must do is raise the value of the trophy. You are not going to stop her from wanting trophies. What you must do is get them to raise the value of the trophy. That's what you have to do as a man. That's what you got to do as a man. But women love their trophies, fellas. That's why they can never have enough gifts. That's why they want the gifts to get progressively better so that the trophy case is becoming progressively more valuable. Now you understand why it is that when you start saying, well, let me give you time, all of a sudden that silly mess that she was just talking about how much she values your time, she the moment you say, fine, from here on in, you're going to get more of my time than anything else, no more money, boatloads of my time, all of a sudden she does a 180 and tells you, oh, no, 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 you got to keep giving tangible gifts and those gifts got to keep getting valuable. Why can't I have your time and gifts? Why can't I have both? Well, you just said that the time was the most important thing. Now you're saying that the time and the gifts are equally valuable. That can't be true. Either the time is the most important thing and the gifts are secondary or the time and the gifts have equal value. The time and the gifts got to have equal value. Don't let folk talk to you stupid and silly. Recognize how silly they're talking to you here. Life, especially when you stepped away from your previous marriage that like you were single, Mm -hmm. you know, and you probably had a lot of suitors out there. And so sometimes can you and I'm going to ask you this: sometimes can a woman get tired of too many gifts? Is there a such thing as too many gifts? No, if it's from the right person, no. But what well, if it's, what if it's okay. from guys just trying to... There you go. So there she just admits it. There she just admits it. Right there. There you go. She just admitted it. Exactly what I just told you. He just told you. Well, can you ever have too many gifts if it's from the right person? No. So she tried to put a qualifier. But she's got gifts from other people who, quote unquote, were not the right people. She got gifts from other people who are, quote unquote, not the right people. She's already admitted that. Then she turns around and says, well, yeah, 
You know, I can I can never have too many gifts. Hell no, she can't have too many gifts. Well, Buy your love. I mean, listen. So you, there's, you, that sounds no, like a no. People, pe- no <laughs> that people, sounds like there's no such thing as too many gifts, guys. No, there's no such thing as too many gifts. But I feel like people give you what they have to offer. Okay. Okay, so some people have gifts to offer. Okay. Some people have time to offer. Some people have, you know, love to offer. I think it's like, you know. It's what they're offering you yeah. at that point. Yeah. And I feel like you can ha- you can have it all. Why can't you be with a guy that's successful and giving? Yeah. There's nothing worse than a guy that's successful and cheap. Has there ever been a guy that was constantly wow. giving? Wow. Did you hear that, fellas? The brainwashing continues there. The brainwashing continues. Wow. That was just devastating. Why can't he be successful and generous? Man? Fellas, come on now. And by the way, she's speaking for all women. Now she's speaking for all women. She's not speaking for just herself. Ladies, got to read the mail right quick. She's speaking for all women. Every woman in this chat room feels exactly the same way. Well, why can't I have it all? Why can't he give me everything? When the men say, why can't we have it all? Then the women say, you shouldn't want that. You shouldn't want that. Why do you need to have all that? You shouldn't want all that. But for the men, what you give should just be unlimited. This is just extensive. There's no limit to that. But what she wants is, oh, what you get is, wait wait a minute now, why do you need all that? To offer, I think it's like, you know, it's what they're offering you at that point. And I feel like you you can have it all. Why can't you be with a guy that's successful and giving? Yeah. There's nothing worse than a guy that's successful and cheap. Has there ever been a guy that was constantly giving you gifts that you just knew you would never be with? No matter how many gifts. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. I guess and vice versa. I you know. Did I, you did you feel like you had to give girls gifts because of who you are? So that's twofold. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes when I was dating when I was single and dating, you know, you, you kind of know if it's going to be a long term relationship or if it's like a fling, you mm-hmm. know. And so I felt like a lot of times in my flings, you know, I would definitely give a lot of gifts just mm-hmm. because, you know, it's like a, you're trying to keep somebody happy. You're also. Uh, OK, folks, I mean, if, if you all want to know the real reason, forget what your YouTubers are out here speculating and gesticulating. If you want to know the real reason, that's the real reason right there. This is their relationship in a nutshell. You just heard it right there. Groupies, one night stands, side chicks. And this is his way of dealing with life is for a female. He throws money because he doesn't have a personality. He doesn't have anything to offer. So every he leads with money, not with accomplishments, not with personality. He leads with money. He leads with dollars. So no wonder this 49 year old chick was like, hey, these young chicks don't know how to make him feel like he's found a mother figure. Oh, I said it. I damn sure said it. And deal with it, nigga. Yeah, I said that. Let's just call that what it is. This 49-year-old chick sees this young fella and realizes he's wayward. He doesn't really have that mother leadership energy in his life. So she's more seasoned and more experienced. And by the way, do you all notice that she's got a lot of those Kim Kardashian affectations? Look it up. You notice that she's got a lot of those Kim Kardashian signals and mannerisms. Did you notice that? She speaks rather soft-spoken. She's real soft and demure, but she is endlessly demanding. Every time you ask her a question, she always knows what she wants. It's just about softly nudging you in that direction, but she always knows what she wants. She always knows what she wants. Y'all got to understand, I've been telling you for years about this. I've been telling you for years to watch out for them types. Watch out for those types. So she's letting you know, oh, I found the right one. I found the right one. 
These young gals don't see what I see. I found the right one. She been waiting for a minute. I found the right one. Y'all don't know his attitude toward the world. This nigga is built to trick. He's built to trick. All she's doing is just sitting back with the bag. You know why? Because he's different. Now, you know what he's telling himself? Well, you're so much more mature than these other women that I've met here. They're all very immature. And Larsa is just on a different level. You know, her, her womanhood is together. She knows who and what she is. She is smart and sophisticated. And, you know, she's just so mature. Yeah, it's not that she's mature. It's that you're hella immature. It's not that she's mature, dummy. It's that you're hella immature. And she sees a sucker when she got one. And these young chicks didn't know how to land the plane. And she's just like, oh, I, I brought something different from them. By the way, for all the females in their 40s and whatnot, eh, it's not just res it's reserved for Larsa. There's a, I can't say there's a dumb simp out there for you because there's not. I mean, there's not. It, is, uh, it, it isn't. But a lot of you can make a whole lot more headway than you have. There's some nigga retired from the city somewhere. We might go ahead and take you and your four kids in. But Lars is letting you know what she's about. She's, she's letting you know what she learned. You kind of know if it's going to be a long-term relationship or if it's like a fling, mm -hmm. you know? And so I felt like a lot of times in my flings, you know, I would definitely give a lot of gifts just mm -hmm. because, you know, it's like a, you're trying to keep somebody happy. You're also trying to maybe you know, buy a little bit of silence, not have people go in public, you know, because when you're dating, you're not necessarily, you know, not everybody meets the boyfriend and girlfriend standard. Am I, am I right? No, I hear you. And so, you know, there was, there were some flings out there that maybe got some shoes or a bag or, you know, some clothes from trophy room or something like that. And, you know, that's how I go. That's how I went back then. Got it. Okay. Now I'm saving all my money so I can buy you the world. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I love you. That's so cute. Okay, if anybody wants to know what happened to Marcus Jordan in five or ten years, this is what happened right here. This is what occurred. If anyone's got any questions about what happened to him, by the way, have these other YouTube channels done this? Have these other YouTube channels taken you down the rabbit hole? Have these other YouTube channels showed you exactly what was going on? And explained it in withering detail how these other ones done that so that you all could hear what he really thinks and how he really is. Not somebody giving guesswork and supposition, but actually confirming it. Don't kick no dirt on his name that ain't real. He might have some strategy you don't know about. Well, if this is strategy, it's going to work out great for her. If this is his strategy, his strategy going to work really good for her. It's going to work out really great for her. And I'm just saying, is that in your best interest, a strategy that works out well for her? That's the kind of thing I want for you to keep in mind right there. It's like, dude, doesn't seem like this is a great strategy. Not for you. Sounds great for her. She's like, yeah, the last train leaving. And my real thing about it is I don't think she's really looking for a whole lot of assets from him necessarily, except that she probably figures that hell, if I can wrangle him in, his daddy will have to bail him out. If I wrangle him in, his dad's going to have to bail him out. So if his dad got to bail him out, then let me just sit back here and see. What I got to do? Might have to do a little bit more. His daddy will bail him out or let me use his name to see if I can get something else going besides this OnlyFans. Let me use his name because she's not going. She hasn't found another Russell Wilson. That's not what she got. This is not another Russell Wilson. It damn sure ain't that. So Larsa just got in where she fit in. Nobody else of any real substance is going to deal with her. You're going to get an average type of dude or an average trick. And he's too dumb to realize what the hell is going on. But you all know how bloodsuckers like her move. 
So she's going to keep running it until it runs out. She's going to keep running it till it runs out. Some folks get it and others don't. So if you want to know what happened, if you want to know what's really happening in this situation of old women and young simps, this is what we end today. Because there are a lot of young fellas out here who are working harder than their fathers and grandfathers ever did. They're working harder than their grandfathers and ever, ever did. They are trying to accomplish more in a shorter period of time than their fathers and grandfathers ever did. And they are walking to be lambs to the slaughter. Dudes, you're not living in your grandfather's world. The females are a lot more savvy today. They got an agenda. And they don't respect a simp of any age. They'll sit there and soak up the benefits, but eventually that's going to be the end to you because she knows that she can't respect you. Why? Because she knows that she runs you. A woman ultimately cannot respect a man that she knows that she runs. She can't respect a man that she knows that she runs, a man she knows she controls. Marcus is supposed to be a 32-year-old with the maturity of a 52-year-old. He's a 32-year-old with the maturity of a 22-year-old. And that's why Larsa is like, yeah, you're going to patch together these holes from Scotty. I can't keep Scotty on the hook no more. Scotty about to get me off of that hook, so I got to get a new sucker on it. I got to get a new one on it. Y'all can hear He's just sitting there patting himself on the back, telling himself she found some guy who has no personality, no accomplishments, no leadership, no maturity. And he places his value on how highly women think of him. And he sits up here and openly states, you know, if I got to spend money to get a woman's attention, what kind of man thinks to spend money to get a woman's attention? Just to get her attention. Dude, you haven't secured anything. What are you trying to do? And what he's trying to do is he's trying to make up for the personality that he knows he lacks. He's trying to make up for the personality that he knows he doesn't have. He's trying to make up for the personality that he knows that he is without. That's the reason why he's doing that. Because he knows the personality isn't actually there. And we live in a day and an age and an era of old women and young simps. They're going to be a bunch of old niggas going to get their pensions run through. Shaquille O'Neal. A bunch of old dudes going to sit up here and be on the hook all over the damn place. But now you see it. Any of you young cats, if you halfway got your stuff together, here comes some cast off half a century old retread trying to figure out if she can get yet one more try at the brass ring and she's shameless she don't give a damn if that nigga is 18 or 89 what's the benefits package because she knows that once she marries you then she's got the law behind her she got Marcus thinking that she's tired of being in the game and Marcus doesn't realize, dude, a chick with her OnlyFans ain't out the game. She's in the middle of the game. He's got some damn savior complex. That's the problem, Jason. See, you don't understand. You ain't seen what I've seen. Okay, you're about to see a whole lot more in a minute. You're about to see a whole lot more in a minute. You're about to see a whole lot more in a minute. However, you might disagree. Don't know why you would, but you might disagree. Therefore, the telephone lines are now open. The number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933. Your personal access code to the program that all your favorite YouTubers love to hate watch. This is the one. Also, We've gone ahead and I've opened up the Zoom for you here. 
So definitely, I want you to go ahead and give us a call on Zoom. If you have been instructed by either myself or my mods that you need to call in, then we need to go ahead and chop it up. And I look forward to hearing from you. But that was not a request. That was an order. Therefore, you've had plenty of time to get yourselves together. The telephone lines are now open. The number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933. Your personal access code to the business. And if you've been instructed to call in, it is your time to let the mods know that it is time to, for you to call in. And it's time to let them know that it is time for you to call in. By the way, if you already saw your name in the chat room, then you already know you're supposed to. So... Let's go ahead and get with that. We got phone calls coming in here. Like I say, everybody always wants to talk to me and then they wait till the end of the program to start calling up. Never the best idea. If you want to talk, you need to call in early. That gives you your best chance and opportunity. By the way, if you're on Zoom, Zoom callers do get priority. So Zoom does get priority. All we ask is that you make sure you have your microphone and your camera turned on if you're going to be on Zoom. That's all you have to do with there. If you're on blog talk, that works okay. All you got to do is just sit back, smile, and dial. The telephone number is 646-787-1933. By the way, if you do call in on Zoom, everybody knows the rules for Zoom. If you do call up on Zoom, just remember, I always get ready to hit the remove button, so you'll go on a permanent vacation if you call up on Zoom and you're not ready to talk. So you know the rules. Let's go ahead and get to the phone lines here. Let me get caller from area code 480. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, this is Dwayne from Phoenix. All right, Dwayne from Phoenix. And what's on your mind? I just got a simple question. Um, who's listening to their podcast? Because I don't know who would want to listen to that. Well, I mean, she's trying to prime the pump for an audience here. Look, Larsa is in the same position that most women over the age of 40 are in. They never got their money together. During this very same program here, as a matter of fact, she talked about this G-Wagon. Now, she didn't mention who bought the G-Wagon, but she said she wound up having to give it back. Hmm. I just stopped the program there because it's going on along with me a long time with me dissecting it. But she was talking about having a G-Wagon. And then she had to give it up. Right. So what I'm saying right. is, and, and what does that tell thing? you? Oh, that tells ahead. you that she's used to things being a certain way. She's used to things being a certain way. She ain't trying to go from a G wagon to a G80 or Genesis or something. She's not trying to go to that. She's trying to keep exactly where she is. So with that being the case, she's trying to prepare herself another platform, something else. When you saw her go to OnlyFans, she's letting you know, I got to hump it on my own. And I'm over the age yeah. of 40 and I can't rely on the skill set and I'm not trying to downgrade. So can you give me an option that will allow me to continue the lifestyle I got, even if Scotty ain't going to be paying for it anymore? That's where she is today. And that's what, what I think this is about is she's trying to use this to, to prime the pump to get herself, you know, her own platforms or whatever, and other options that she can monetize. Right, and and with Marcus, um, I know black nepotism, that's cool and all, but he didn't learn any game from his dad. I mean, we all know the I'm stories about, did. you know, about MJ, but it's like, wow, he's tricking, tricking. No, no, sir, I'm afraid that he did. <laughs> yeah, everybody, like I say, like Shaq. Well, I'm just saying a, a lot of folks, I think, overestimate Michael Jordan's social savvy. Please remember why he got divorced from Juanita in the first place. It wasn't because he was nickel slick. Yeah. And please take a look at what happened after that. Michael Jordan has never been this, you know, captain of femininity there. That, that's never been the case. So, I, and by the way, Michael Jordan has always been a free spender. From gambling to cars to everything else, Michael Jordan has is one of the most notorious free spenders out there. So with that being the case, I would submit to you all that rather than this being an anomaly, yeah. 
this is actually, I can, I can see You're right. how he got there. I can see how he got there. Look, if you want to destroy leadership in your boys, you destroy that the same way you destroy nations. I think it was Steinbeck who once said that if I wanted to destroy a nation, I would give it too much for too long and I would bring it to its knees. If you want to destroy your sons, Hmm. Michael Jordan had to get out the mud and put it on the bricks. His son has never had to do that. Now he's 32 openly telling you what he doesn't have to do. His father appreciates the value of a dollar. His son sees a dollar as a given. And take a look at what he's doing. He's acting as if the money will always be there. Well, it's always been there, but you're not the reason it's there. So he's completely disassociated from the value of it. And so he's using it for hedonism and, you know, all, all sorts of debauchery. Right. That's why he's telling you about a list of females. They walk around with shoes and handbags. The woman is gone. She's no longer giving him any benefit whatsoever. Yeah. She's gone with the shoes and the handbag. And he's sitting here trying to find a new chick to replace it with. And they come in the door basically with a compensation package that they didn't earn. Well, but then again, why would he think that she has to earn it when he didn't have to earn it? Right. And I can't believe he can't see that. All she wants is that Jordan name because whatever she got on the back end, as soon as they tie the knot, you know, that that, that money's going up for her. And I hope he don't (laughs) – I just hope he ain't got to – he going to lose because – I mean, she chose it for a reason. Look. When women turn predatory, when women turn predatory, brother, they they looking for a sucker to get. They're looking for a victim. And usually they go looking for a simp. Simps make very good victims. They make very good, they make very poor boyfriends and husbands, but they make very good victims. She's looking for a victim. Look, the bottom line is at the end of the day, Scottie Pippen done, done finally shook this monkey off his back. And she was, we all know she was trying to get basically hooked into him for life. Scotty was able to get her hooks out of him. Lo and behold, as soon as the court case turns and Scotty's able to finally start getting her hooks out of him, she goes to find somebody young enough to be her son, puts the hooks in him. But understand why that's important. You see, Scotty Pippen, and dudes in the NBA, if, if they're getting their pensions or whatever, you she can't really get that money anymore. You can't really get your hands in that. So you're trying to get a young dude at the beginning of his viability so that he can't protect his assets. See, men in their 40s and 50s, yeah. except for the dumb sent ones, are smarter and we protect our assets. We're also very careful. We don't just run off and get in relationships. You know, the broad for three months and then y'all talking about getting married. We don't, the smart ones amongst, we don't do that. She went looking for a fellow who was easy meat, easy prey. He's going down, she, the check box is down the line. Whatever she wants, he's here to do. That's not leadership. Leadership is not a man saying, baby, whatever you want. That's not the way leadership works. It's whatever you've earned. That's the way leadership works. Whatever you've earned, and I will inform you if you've earned it. But that's not what's happening here. And that tells you what she's doing. She's like, yeah, I want someone who can provide the best I'm going to get. So even though you're only 10% of Scotty's productivity, this is the best I can do because every other athlete on the planet and any man with any sense knows not to do this with a 50-year-old female. So I got to get my hooks in you while you're still stupid and naive and don't know how to protect your assets. And she's going for it. And here's the thing. Remember, I told y'all before, when a female turns predatory, man, marriage is a pit stop because she knows it won't cost her anything. Marriage is a pit stop for a predatory female. She's like, what the hell is it going to cost me? I can get married to you. Even if we get divorced, I can hit you up for a settlement and move on to the next sucker. So she's like, what penalty do I Yeah, you're absolutely right. What penalty am I going to pay? The law, I got the law behind me. The law, the law says I'm supposed to do that. Run this little 32-year-old nigga's pockets. The law says I'm supposed to do that. I promise you, if they go to, if he marries her and then they go to court for divorce, she's going to swear up and down she ain't got no money. She's going to swear up and down she doesn't make any money on OnlyFans. 
While they're dating, she's going to swear she's making plenty of money on OnlyFans. If they get married, y'all mark my words, she's going to swear she doesn't make a dime on OnlyFans. Mark my words. That's what she's going to say. I'll let you have the last word. Uh, yeah, thanks for this broadcast. And uh, you was exactly right. Uh, she's playing the long game for that uh, MJ Cabela's son out. And that's what she's looking at. Because like we said in the in the court case, when they get that divorce, probably a year, maybe two years from now, yeah, he's going to be right there bailing him out. That's what she's counting on. She's counting on that because, you know, what other legacy does Jordan have? So she's counting on that. Here's the problem. She may have played her cards correctly, too. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. We appreciate that. I want to thank everyone who has contributed to support tonight's program on PayPal, Cash App, Super Chat, Venmo. Thank you very much for your support for all of you here. We appreciate that. Uh, Hunger Millennial Network, Project Leroy, East End Productions, everybody else here. Thank you very much for your support. We appreciate that. My man, Kansas, on Zoom. I need you to hang tight for me for a moment here. I got to get Icy Kitty up here. All right, Icy, um, we got you here on the line, sister. So you had a few things you wanted to ask. Yes, I'm here, and I'm in Athens, Alabama. Now, Jason, you know I love you. I would never say anything against you. Of course not. But it is very, <laughs> it is very lovely when a man opens the door for a woman. Why? Other people watch. Because it's it's very it's it's very masculine. It's the ultimate to okay, me. Slow, okay, well, look, okay, slow down. I get that. I don't want us to get too far down the road. Now, I'm not debating or arguing with your opinion of it. Your opinion of it can be whatever you'd like for it to be. And that's your viewpoint on it, that's perfectly fine. However, I do believe in logic and reason. So before I go any further. I would like to understand something and maybe you can explain it to me since you just stated it the way you did. What you said was that a man opening doors like that, why it's so, it's seen as, when people see it, it's seen as so masculine. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. Yeah. Do you think that other men ever sit around and congratulate another male and say, hey, that was really cool how you opened the door for your girlfriend or opened the door for your wife. Do you think other men sit around patting each other on the back and giving each other attaboys for doing specifically that gesture? No, but when you're not around, they're going to be doing it. Okay, first of all, you don't know that. When, but when second of all, that you, you, okay, but second of all, we're not going to bypass the question I asked. The question I asked is, you just said it's so masculine. I'm trying to figure out who exactly is it that sees it that way that you just claimed and characterized it. So what you've just done is you've just confirmed, well, it's not any of the men. Any men who see another guy do that don't think he's masculine or more masculine, nor do they think he's less for not doing so. So you've already disqualified half the population. So we know the men don't see it as a masculine gesture. So who does? Well, then I guess I'll have to say the women. Oh, okay. Whoa, 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 which women are you referring to? All of us. All of us. So in other words, what That's you are right. saying is that you put a value on your man giving what you interpret as masculine gestures to random females, including females he does not know and isn't in a relationship with. Yes. Well, that's it's part of being a gentleman, just okay. like holding the door open. Whoa, whoa, whoa. To no, 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 Women he's not in a relationship and doesn't even know. Yes. Why would a man place value on that? 
because you're a teacher, you know what I mean? So you're teaching the world this is how it's done. If you're driving her around, she's your woman. Okay, you say, whoa, whoa, whoa. You you're say, you're, you're, you're claim, teaching the world how it's done, how what is done. Yep. How uh, handling your business. Okay, you're handling using, no, 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 you're, me, you're using metaphors, handle your business and handle your woman. I, I, I'm interested to know how yep. uh, opening a door is handling your woman. You're giving metaphors. Yep. You're, those are metaphors. Yep. Can we be literal and specific? What does that mean? Handling your business. Handling your business means this woman is following me because I am protecting her from the world. I'm protecting her from touching the door, getting her hands dirty, making sure, you know, y'all don't see her, you know, legs as she's getting out the door. Okay, well, that's opening a door, and that depends, not to see her legs, so you don't want your legs to be seen? Mm -hmm. Legs, you know, bottom, everything, you, you know what I mean. No, like I don't know. you're covering her. No, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Oh, wow. I don't, okay, What's okay, coming? okay, well, in that case, why don't we just leave her at home if we don't want people to see her legs in her rear end? Well, often when your woman is very beautiful, you will not bring her everywhere, actually. Okay, so will you stick to one explanation? What are you saying here? If we're supposed to be like the Arab world and we do not want men or other people fawning over yes. her body parts, then why is she in the yes. car in the first place? She shouldn't be allowed to drive and she shouldn't be allowed to leave home and she should have to wear a burqa if that's the rationale you're going to use. Correct? Yeah, well, okay, so that could hey, yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. Right. No, 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 no. Okay, if, if, if that's, if that's the rationale, no, ma'am. If that's the rationale you're going to use, then the woman mm -hmm. really shouldn't be leaving home at all, correct? Pretty much, yes. Okay, well, most of us do not want to be in a relationship with a woman who is stuck at home like a parakeet. <laughs> so what you are describing well, is Well, we a, have things to do in the house. What you're describing, you ain't got that damn much to do. And if I want to go somewhere and I want my female to go with me, that's unreasonable that she would tell me, no, I like to, if I want a home, there are some guys who like homebodies, but those are generally males yes. that females don't want to fool with anyway. Mm. Why would a man want yeah, his, I'm why would a man a want his woman to be a homebody? Uh, because you don't, you don't want, because you're her world. And like I said, I was married to a Muslim, so maybe I am okay. pretty, how, you know, it's imprinted on how me. How long were you married to well, this Well, I'm divorced gentleman. now. How long were you married to him? Uh, 14 years. Okay, 14 did, okay years. stop. You're talking a bit much. Just, just keep it down to the facts, just the facts. You were married to this man for 14 years. Was there an age difference between the two of you? No, it wasn't. But it was my last marriage. So okay. we were like 39. Okay, we just, were older. okay just yes or no. I, I literally just said just the facts and she literally starts going. Okay. You saying you were both the same I'm age. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Did you have any children? No, I couldn't have children. Okay. So you were married for 14 years. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's cool. How'd that turn out? Uh, not, not good. Not well. Um, Why not? Everything that you said about. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What? Why not? Um. Well, I think because I couldn't have children, he went ahead and had a baby. So. Um, uh, so those kind of things, you know what I mean? Those kind of things. No, I don't know what you mean. So you're saying that he got another, uh, are you saying that because you were infertile yes. that he got another woman pregnant? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Let me find out one thing here. Yeah. And he wasn't How, okay, a nice guy. Okay. He wasn't a nice guy at all. Okay. He was nice enough to marry. Don't start that one. Don't start that one. Mm -hmm. He was nice enough for you to marry. Yes, now you're going to try to kick dirt in his name. How the hell did he get you down the aisle if he wasn't a nice guy? That's true. 
Okay, then don't kick, right. don't don't try that kicking dirt in his name because if I ask him, I bet you he's got some not so nice things to say about you. So just because he's not here to defend himself, don't think you're gonna kick dirt in his name and we just gonna let it slide, ma'am. If you married him, he was nice enough, yeah. wasn't he? Okay, thank you. He wasn't a nice guy. He was nice enough to marry. There yeah. you go. All right. But remember, by the way, that was by the, the last way, train leaving. Okay, ma'am. That was the last train ma'am, leaving. No, so I, what, I no, it, was, it. <laughs> it wasn't the last train leaving. No, I, I, it depends. I, I ain't seen the picture of you yet. It might have been the last train leaving. I don't know. Because by then, you yes, did, are you saying y'all was. got, wait a minute, how old are you now? Well, I'm 57 now. Okay, yeah, that was the last train leaving. And you know that. That was the last one leaving. Yes, All right, right yeah, the, that was it. You know the picture of the lady in the blue top? I look just like her. <laughs> Every time I'm in the chat, I'm saying, Jason, take that picture down. That's me. You know, the, the light-skinned lady, the, the chubby <laughs> in front of the doctor. I look just like that. But I'm working on it. I'm working on it. She's working on it. Okay. And then you wonder, no yes. offense, baby. Then you wonder why you had to have side babies. What, what was a man supposed to do? What was he supposed to do? Well, now I understand that. <laughs> I mean, you, I you you can't have, okay, she can't have kids. She won't lose weight. He's supposed to just sit there and suffer in silence, basically, is what he's supposed to do. Right. I was, I grew comfortable, but now I know better, and I am, I am on it. I'm, get, I'm just I'm saying that, that that is the definition of unreasonable right there. It's just like, okay, sit your ass over there and just suffer with the consequences. Uh, marriage is not supposed to be yeah. no damn prison sentence. And the women today are like, oh, good. The law gives me shackles in a prison <laughs> sentence. This is an outrageous amount of immaturity. Mm-hmm. Here's the other problem right here. Now, you were talking about the reason why you were saying those things about all these chivalrous things, because you said that you were married yeah. to a Muslim man. Now, by the way, was he black? Mm-hmm. I know he was North African, so he was um, Algerian, actually. Okay, but well, that, that's not a race. That's not a race, man. Was he black? Uh, no, no. Okay, so she was he married. Was considered North African. Uh, she was married to a white. He, she was married to a white. I don't want to say Arab, but yeah. she was married to a white man yeah. from Africa. Okay, just wanted to make sure about that. So that explains yeah. a few things. <laughs> and she hung in there for fourteen years, y'all. 14 yes. years. Now, by the way, all those things that you you were talking about here before about opening car doors and things, did he do that? Uh, yes. You know, they're very, uh, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so opening car yep. doors, anniversaries, um, making sure you didn't have to step in puddles, holding doors for you? Yes. Okay. He did all that kind of stuff there, and did he do it on a regular basis? Uh, yes. Uh-huh. Yep. Mm-hmm. But that's all he did. Okay, like, but no, 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 no. Okay, no, 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 no. That's not the point. Now, we all can't right. do that. Because you were holding that up as a paragon of virtue. That's the issue. Yes, I am. Yeah, that's I am. the issue. You're saying that mm-hmm. you had a man who okay. was performing all those masculine gestures and you rewarded yes. him with a divorce. By the way, who filed for the divorce? Uh, it was me. Thank you. So in other words, fellas, hold, listen to Icy. Hold the car door. Help her over the threshold. Pay her bills. Make sure she can be a homebody if she wishes to. See to all of her inner narcissistic needs. Make sure you remember birthdays and anniversaries and she's going to give you a nice crisp divorce paper for your trouble and your pains. After you do all that, you're going to get treated worse than the fellow, or at least you're going to get treated the same, probably get treated worse than the fellow who didn't hold the car door open. Because he ain't going to get, I'm not going to get treated as bad as him because I wasn't going to marry you in the first place because as soon as you tried that car door thing, that I would have checked that. As soon as you did that, I'm like, hey, wait a minute, yeah. Burka or not, you can pull up the handle on this damn thing. Hey, I got automatic running step, uh, running, uh, running boards. I got motorized running boards. As soon as you open up the door, the running boards pop out. That's good enough. What you holding us up for what? So you can fantasize to yourself about chivalry. The shoes on your feet stepping on my running boards. Who got those? That's not enough. We always have to do more and more and more. And here's the problem. 
you're less of a female, no offense, but you're less of a female than you were when he first got with you. The list of demands you're making of him are expanding, but the list of demands and the list of benefits he's receiving from you are diminishing. While you're, yeah. while you're openly bragging that the list of benefits should be expanding as opposed to, you know what? I'm grateful to be here. Let me get my hippity hobbity built ass over here and open this car door on this wonderful vehicle that he has been so nice to buy for us. I'm not grateful enough that he's bought the car. No, he needs to come open the door on the car that he bought too. It's not enough that he bought it. He needs to come open the door also. I want you all to think about that for just a yeah. few moments. And by the way, at no point now have I argued with your opinion about it, what the value of it should be, what you should think of it, whether it's reasonable, whether you think it's acceptable. I'm not arguing that one bit. I said what I said before. Well, you are entitled to think whatever you want to. And if that's your opinion about what it should be, then that should be about what your opinion of it is. That's perfectly fine. I want everyone else, though, to hear a logical, reasonable explanation and walking this rationale out to its natural conclusion. So the man can mm -hmm. buy you those expensive shoes on your feet. They're good enough to get on your feet, but not good enough to step up on the running boards of the vehicle he bought. And he can go and purchase a $100,000 truck, a $120,000 truck, a $150,000 truck. It's good enough for you to sit in, but it ain't good enough for you to reach out and open your hand, uh, open the handle on the door. Now, it's not good enough for that. You're good enough to sit in the truck, but you're too good to open the door to get in it. Well, it just looks bad from the society point. It's like he's the man. You know what I mean? He is the man and he should be doing those things. Okay, but when you really when you ex when you extend that type of emotional exploitation, can you imagine why a man would say, "Well, I'll be damned if you're too good to open a hand I'm not too good to open the handle on a truck, but you are even though it's the 21st century." Mm -hmm. Well, in that case then, I'm too good to have just one woman. Mm -hmm. Right. I understand. But yes, I didn't say I didn't say do you understand? I'm saying, but do you agree? Um no, I still don't. And also when you were saying about the brakes so and having her wash the good. car, like I would never dream of doing that. There, uh, exactly. So I don't understand something. She no, is right. perfectly pleased to tell you all about how much you can lavish the benefits of all these things, the shoes, the dresses, the handbags, the clothes, the sitting at home working, not working. She doesn't even have children to take care of. She's a kept woman, a stay at home mm -hmm. wife. She's l soaking up the benefits, sucking them up like an elephant snout and then giving you a long list of the things she won't do. Now think about that for a few moments. She's getting extraordinary benefits and then regaling you about what she's not going to do. Not going to do it. Um, just on that. I just found all this to be fascinating. Jason? I found this to be fascinating. Yeah. And I don't know why I was so stuck on that. I'm very stuck on the male role and the female role. Um, I don't know why, um, but I am. Yeah, but here's the thing. And, and now but that I'm but single, you want to do okay? Single, but I'm here's the thing. Cutting the grass. Oh, right, right, right. We'll feet. come back to we'll come back to that because now you got to hump it on your own and all that stuff he was doing for you. Now you're doing it by yourself. Yeah. I'm like, oh damn, it was nice having a fellow around. But yeah. but we didn't appreciate yeah. it when we had it. So my point here is, in the modern era. Women love to discuss masculinity and femininity so long as the women get to define what it is. So as long right. as the women right. get to define what a masculine male is. So you see, it wasn't enough for him to be masculine, to be paying your bills, paying for your clothes. That was paying for the car you're sitting in. That wasn't masculine enough. He's also got to do these other little things too. And because you will say that that's not, you're not really masculine if you're not doing that. 
And meanwhile, I just mm. showed you and I just demonstrated that that's an arbitrary definition. He's not gaining any points or any status in the world among men, you admit it. Oh, that does nothing. Other men don't look up to him nor admire him for doing it. None of them say, wow, I wish I was like you. None of them are doing that. None. None. Think about that for a few moments. Okay. None. Nobody was doing that. Nobody. You admitted it that you know that's the case. And yet... You're still insisting that's what they should do anyway. But it's a kind gesture. Um, okay, is it? No, no, no. Kindness of it okay, ma'am, a panhandler. Have you ever had panhandlers beg you for money? Oh, sure. Okay, yeah. so now understand, using logic now, if you're going to say that him doing that for you, this inconvenience, by the way, because this is very inefficient to have a man doing that, this inconvenience is kind. So what you're saying is that a man who doesn't do that is unkind. Got it. Understood. And, uh, now, yeah, and if, when you when the fella is pan, when you can pull it to a red light and that old drug addict is panhandling for money, when you give him your money, if he's there every day and he's literally banging on your window hey it's monday open up i need some money so when you give him money is that kindness uh yeah i i think okay good 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 okay that, that's great that is kindness now if you don't give it to him is that unkindness yeah i sort of feel that way yes yeah. I no, 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 you, it, you, it, no, it, no, 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 you said I sort, I sort of feel that way. Either you do or you don't. Mm -hmm. So I do. I do. I feel bad and guilty, you know, if I don't give. I okay, do. and have you given to every single panhandler at every single red light you've been at? Oh, no, uh-uh. Oh, no. so in other words, obviously you didn't consider it to be unkind enough. Uh, it would be like the situation would be scary. Um, I just, you know, I don't, I give in other ways. Uh, I don't know, but yeah, I don't well, I'm telling you, can give money to every single isn't one. The, isn't the safety. female psyche a wonderful thing? Now for men, we got to give money <laughs> and physical benefits. For women, uh, I can give you some psychic satisfaction. How about that? <laughs> yes. We do pick and choose. Yes, that's true. Just understand that. That's my point. So, like I say, you can have your principles about it, but just remember when you say that that's a masculine gesture, just remember it's a masculine gesture that does nothing for our status. By your own admission, this will not raise the man's status, not in his own eyes, not in the eyes of anybody watching. In other words, it's a useless gesture that bloats your ego. Because the only person who's impressed, yes. the person who is impressed by that is you. But it literally That's does, true. but it literally does nothing for anyone else. It should do something for you. It should do something that you've done something to make me happy. Because the goal and the objective i'm yours be the goal okay i'm yours all right yep i see i'm gonna try this a different way here is <laughs> i see um okay by your own admission you said that <laughs> I, you, that you were built like the woman in front of the refrigerator all right, I see. No, the one in front of the doctor, the the one who looks Hawaiian. So not her, the other one with the blue shirt that you always show in front of the doctor, uh, with the light blue shirt. She looks Hawaiian. I see. So one, you're saying not the, the smaller one. one, but the even bigger one. That's this the one, one you're referring to. <laughs> I look exactly like her, but I'm working on it. <laughs> 
All right, well, I see you could have just left that alone, baby. If you saw I didn't get it right the first time, you could have just, you didn't say, in front, I thought you said in front of the refrigerator, not the scale. But, um, baby, you could have left that alone the first, you was doing better the way you were. She was like, oh, no, Jason, this isn't bad enough. Ma'am, I see. I'm so glad you called in, though. Here's my question. Yes. How much do you think that that masculine gesture of routinely walking to the, a man stop what he's doing, routinely walking the other side of the car to open your door and close it for you as if you are the queen of England. How much do you think that gesture is worth dollar wise? Um, I would say like a hundred dollars. Okay, great. I'm glad to hear that. So if he does that, five days a week. Let's just say you go just one place, he only opens up the door once and then has it open up again for you again to leave. Five days a week. That's a thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. That's four thousand dollars a month. Just in yeah. door opening. Fellas, I want you to check out what I'm saying here because nobody's ever explained this to you all here before. And if you use the rationales that I give you, you'll you're gonna win the argument every single time. So this dude are, are you getting me here? This dude yes. is this dude is giving you forty eight thousand dollars a year in masculinity just for indoor the door. opening. Yes. Yes. I I see. Were you yes. giving him forty eight thousand dollars a year in femininity? Um, yes, but not, what? but not without the makeup and everything. Cause he, he didn't allow the makeup and the, the glamour. Auntie oh, chill. This is what I really am like. Yeah. So my answer would be no. I didn't give him all that. He didn't allow me to be like that. I had I to cover see. up and such. What size were you wearing? Uh, <laughs> the picture. So I would say I was a good solid 18 and now I'm like a 16, but I'm getting it down. I see. Ma'am, you were a size 18. You were over the age of 40 and yes. a size 18. Yes. How, yes. what, 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 what well, remember we're wearing caftan. Ma'am, we're wearing caftan I don't give stuff. a damn if you're wearing a tent. My point is, how much how much value and femininity do you think you were delivering to this man at a nice jolly size 18 over the age of 40 <laughs> for a decade and a half? Will you please tell me how much he was but giving you? He, wasn't he was giving you almost fifty thousand dollars a year of masculinity just in door opening. Please tell me how much how much in femininity a size 18 is giving over a size 18 over the age of 40 is giving a man in a year. Yes. Well, but he wouldn't let me be beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Was, I asked a question. Me. How much so in femininity were you delivering 30. to him? 30, 30,000 by cooking and cleaning um, and cooking from scratch, no outside food. Ma'am, you know, so they don't. You know, they eat think about all. think about one thing for a moment. How was that man feeding himself before you ever came along? Uh, yeah, he was. He was okay. You know, he so, was that, doing so, his that, own so that so that so that so okay for all the ladies who want to hang their hats on, fellas. I'm bringing it back this week because y'all need to get get your uh, files updated. If you haven't seen my last program, a million dollars worth of femininity. I broke all this down then. Fellas, if she's, she's cooking for herself, she gonna eat too. So you acting like cooking is something you only do for him. The hell you do. You was a size 18. This fella here is getting morsels. You sitting over the pot. So let's not do that one now. Baby, you was doing much eating. You was doing much eating. So don't make it look like you was just doing it for yourself. <laughs> oh, trust me. You, you was, all she was missing was a feed bag. I, I, I won't cast aspersions. I'm better now. Baby, you got me, one size, a decade and a half, you didn't drop one size. Stop it. 
paging Jillian Michaels. Yeah. Okay, here's my point. Ma'am, $30,000 a year for cooking. There's chicks at Wendy's, yeah. mate, Monette. <laughs> yeah. Come on now. And then I was working from home. Yeah, I was working from home. Just you like I should, do now. Okay. And I'm working right now. His, ma'am, his um, only like mistake when, his only mistake is if your big ass is going to be at home working, no offense, he should have installed a treadmill. That's what he should have done. That, that was where he, he messed up. Yes. He installed a treadmill. Yes, no, he we we did have a treadmill because, you know, they're very... Did you break it? A lot of Miss Muslim men. But, yeah, I hardly used it. But I did buy one for, the, for my new house. That was Wait a minute. He bought... He bought, bought. Wait a minute. He bought you a treadmill. Yes. And you hardly used it. And I it. hardly used it. What? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. And he got on me about that. Yeah. Because I didn't understand the importance of it. So this was, you know, 13, 14 years ago. What? I didn't understand the importance. What? What? But I'm different now. I'm better now. I'm a great person. Ma'am, you know the damn importance of a treadmill and a healthy BMI. You know that. Yes. And by the way, here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. A size 18 wanting other folks to come open the door. Mm -hmm. Baby, if you was a healthy ass, wait, it would take too long for them to get around there to you. It would take too damn long. What are you talking about? What the hell are you talking about? It would take you too damn long to get there. This is why she wants somebody to come open the door because she Mm -hmm. can't get it. She's like, hey, she needs some help spinning around. She needs some help spinning around. Good grief! You know, it probably did make and it probably did make me feel like a princess. You're right. At that, you know, it probably did make me feel like a princess. Baby, uh, like like a princess. For him to do that, like a prince. Okay, I'm just saying, mm-hmm. you like a princess, and you don't look. This is what I'm talking. The men, <laughs> as men, we have to actually be these things. A man can't pretend to be, quote, masculine. He can't pretend to be productive. He can't make believe. The women get to just freestyle. Mm-hmm. The women get to yeah, just make believe right. all through it. But the men, we have to actually make something real. So he's pretending yeah. that he's got a nice petite princess. And meanwhile, no offense, mm-hmm. he's with one of the hippos from Disney's Fantasia. What is going on here? Look, size 18, 45 years old. And then you're going to begrudge this man a side chick. You should be ashamed of yourself. You should be ashamed to be walking in a divorce court. Or should I say waddling in and talking about your honor? He got a side hoe. He got a kid. And I'm upset. Ma'am, have you seen, have you felt the floor yeah. rumble when you come through the house? That should have you upset. He was, yes, he was sparing, I, I I'm a different person he was now. sparing you the rigors of pregnancy. Okay. He was doing you a favor. He was trying. He was trying to save y'all's marriage and you wouldn't let him. Yeah, probably. I yeah. see. I see. Uh, first of all, I thank you for your candor. Yeah. First of all, I thank you for your candor. Oh, yeah. I see. Give me a yeah. damn break. So first of all, you're kind of disproving your own point. He did all that stuff for you and you still divorced him. You still yeah. divorced him. It didn't get him anything. Well, remember because of the baby. Because he, he, you know, he had a baby. <laughs> okay. I mean, ma'am, I hear you. Yeah. But by the same token, how many years were you two married before he did that? Yeah, so it would it would have been about, you know, 13 or something. Okay. So, you know, it happened the last year. Yeah, we were so, married So, okay, time. so by this time, you and your late, your mid-50s. Yes. Exactly. And you're up, okay, and now. you, so you way over the damn hill. You ain't having no kids. Exactly, yes. What kind of Muslim wife are you? You supposed to just say, all right, nigga, you went kind of foul right there. We're going to work this out. What kind of Muslim wife was you? Yes, I understand. No, I no, really no. Love him, Jason. Did, okay. Why were you marrying? Why did you marry a man who you didn't love and he wasn't very nice and you stayed with him for 14 years? Last, last train leaving. <laughs> And that you should have stayed on that son of, you should have stayed on that son of a gun, baby. 
you was putting on a pound for every week y'all was together. <laughs> what the hell? I'm telling you. I'm getting it off. I, I, you know, I'm different now, and I'm glad I'm a better person now. Also, she's and dropped that, one you know, dress. First of, first of all, Ice, Ice because, is one of uh, my favorite. A lot of the things you say, he said. Ice is one of my, and you didn't listen. Ice is one of my favorite people. Y'all know, I, 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 Ice is, is we adore Ice, but my God. <laughs> Ma'am, this don't make no damn yeah. sense. You worried about niggas opening up the car door. I'm worried about you opening up Taco yes. Bell. You worrying about the wrong damn thing. Yes. A masculine nigga would have left You're you in right. that car until you got to a healthy weight. That's what he would have done. At least here's my killing part about it. Yeah. Do you realize that if that man had made you open up your car door from the outside, that would have been more exercise than you usually did in a day. And I'm not joking. And she's upset, y'all. You would swear that she was a size four talking like this. You'd have no idea this was a middle-aged woman, post-middle-aged woman, size 18, which means she about 300 plus. Talking about, I no, need not somebody needs to come open my door because I don't feel yes. dainty enough. Meanwhile, she would have got that's the most exercise yes. she got all week is opening up the damn handle on the door, and she refused yeah. to do it. Yep. Think about that. It for did just make a me feel moments. dainty. It did. But you're not dainty. I'm getting there. What the hell? Are what? Baby, you still a size 16. You're getting where? Where are you getting? 16 from 18 is a big difference. How long did um, that take? And I'm being honest. Uh, just about two years. Because the at now, this, you know, I, I, have, at you know this, I know what to do. At this rate, you will be at a healthy weight by about the time you're 88. At this, at the rate we going. No, no, no. Mm-mm. Your metabolism. I'm just there by no, your metabolism. I have the treadmill. I walk. I have a dog. Ma'am, your metabolism slows down as you get older. You already damn near sixty. Yes, I know. I agree. But I know what to do now, and I'm doing it. You knew what to do me. for the last thirty years. I, I know. I didn't know the right things to do. You knew the right I things do. to do for the last 30 years. We've been talking about fitness in America now for the last 40 years. I know I've been here for it. Mm-hmm. And you talking about home cooking. What the hell I was you it. cooking at home that helped you, kept you at a felt hefty size 18? What the hell were y'all eating at home? <laughs> Wag you burgers? Oh, my God. Well, you know, they love their bread. Um, you know, the, baby, the there ain't meat, that much bread eating eat in the world. No, oh, no, no. It ain't that. Baby, the only way that you stay in a size 18 on lamb is if you eating that bastard by the leg. That's the only way you stay in a size 18. You gave your husband a little slice from the front. You ate the whole back ass end of the lamb. That's the only way this is going to happen. <laughs> If you're at home making your yeah, own, if true. you're at home making your own Olive Garden breadsticks, that's the only way this is happening, yeah. ma'am. No, don't yeah. try that one. No. Yeah. Well, no, I was sneaking food when he wasn't around. There was you go. Sneaking food. Yeah. There you go. Damn. There it is. And like I said, those calf tans cover up everything. Y'all, she was down there. Chris, this nigga going to work. She's streaking out to Krispy Kreme, Dunkin' Donuts, everything else. This fella can't figure out why it is his woman done cook, but his house smells like KFC when he get back. And he's like, I don't see now box nowhere. I know the heifer lying. I know she's lying. Mm-hmm. I can't prove it. So, baby, yep. he, his life would have been so much better if he'd installed some ring cameras. If he installed some ring cameras, oh, he could have had yep. this fixed a long damn time ago. Here's the... and. Here's the part I'm wondering. How much did this man make a year? Uh, he made a good we we he made a good salary. So I, we were in the DMV. Good so salary ain't a family, number. We were in the DMV. Good so salary ain't a number. How much this man 60, made? He made about sixty, and I made about forty. 
And and so and remember, and you ate everything. about four, you so ate he, about thirty eight. So he made he made <laughs> about sixty. You made about forty, and then you ate about yeah, 54, 55. You ate some. <laughs> that was about right there. This whole damn food budget. This nigga working overtime so he can pay the rent because he don't know where his stuff is going. And baby, you was working as a size eighteen. I'll be damned. No, but I worked from home, and I still do work from home. What were you doing? Though. What were you doing at insurance. home for work? Were you a fireplace? What was a size eighteen doing at home no. work? And you know, remote remote work, uh, insurance verification, that kind of thing. Uh, that's what I do. Okay, I'm, I'm trying for to insurance figure. company. All right, well, I'm glad you didn't come across your premiums up in there. All right. Well, like I say, ma'am, Lord have mercy. Look, the bottom line is this is your dude here. Open up some doors for me. He takes care of me. He's not masculine Mm -hmm. enough. He doesn't open up the doors and he's going to do all that work. And he stayed at it for 14 years. There's niggas who gotten out of prison sooner than that. And he did it for a size 18 who was lying to yes. him? Who was lying to him? Yeah. He, he bought her a treadmill. Yep. And she yep. just said, screw it. Now, what is the message that sends to every other man out here? What's the message that sends? How much but work I'm not is he like supposed that to do? Anymore. Okay. Let me try this a different way. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? Let, let, let me, let I me understand try, you. What am I saying? Yeah, let me try this a different way. Um, y'all, basically what? She was losing like four ounces. <laughs> She's like losing... Point zero four pounds a month, basically. Not even a whole pound a month. She was losing like point zero four pounds a month. That's not slow progress. That's glacial. <laughs> Now, I'm all in your corner. I'm just saying here that the man got short shrifted, Mm -hmm. baby. She telling us that that makes you more masculine. I'm like, okay, what's the reward we going to get for this right here? She's like, you can get all of me. Mm -hmm. Okay, well. (laughs) But I got what you're saying now. Mm -hmm. I I understand what you're saying. All right. I see. Here's what we going to do. This is just how committed to your damn health I am at this point right here. Okay. I will tell you what I will do. This is the Jason Black challenge in this damn thing here. Okay. Now, Icy just told us that she was going to have all this took care of by January. Yep, I sure am. Okay, I don't know what all this taken care of is, so why don't you illuminate me? So now I'm about, like, I'm a, a, a 16, but coming out down into a 14. I know what to do. Keto, um, one oh, OMAD, God. one meal a day, um, plant based, you know, both, it, whatever. I know. And I about an hour and, and about an hour and a half of exercise, ma'am. Some cardio, about an hour and a half of cardio every day. Notice, notice she left that yep. part out. So I can d- do it. Diet is important, but I'm like, okay, we ain't doing the rest of it here. All right. All right. What's she saying? No, because I'm, so I'm working so hard. I'm working so much. I can't. I can't walk. It hurts my ankles if I try to get out there and walk. I can't walk. It hurts my ankles. Okay. All right. Okay. Mm-hmm. But seriously, how tall are we now? Uh, I am 5'8", okay. almost 5'9". Baby, look here. I'm five. She keeps on. I'm five, almost 5'9". Five Do you think that's going to make that extra 100 pounds look look, look less onerous? <laughs> Jason, I'm almost five foot nine. So you see, oh this this two eighty, I wear it well. Yeah. <laughs> Ma'am, the only way you can wear and I'm two twenty three. The only way you can wear an extra hundred pounds well is if you threw that bastard in a duffel bag. All right. Um. All exactly. right. Exactly. So, so she says she's two twenty three. All right. 
Yep. Target weight for you is somewhere in the neighborhood of 150. I can do that. I was shooting for 180, but I can I can do 150. Well, yep, I can like get I say, there. to be totally honest, it's going to be somewhere around 150. However, 180 would be a welcome improvement. I will tell you. Yes. I'll tell you what I'll do right here because folks are going to think, Jason, you ain't helpful and you roasting this, that, and the other. I'll tell you what I'll do. It is now August 2023. Mm-hmm. I want you to check back with me in February for our Galentine's Day program. Okay. I will pay you a dollar for every pound you lose. Okay. So you're going to start at 223 and subtract we'll, it? We'll or start, We will start exactly how you where you, know the- however far you go. I will pay you a dollar for every pound you lose. If you do it before the year is over, I will pay you $2 for every pound you lose. Okay. So I will take my weight and I'll send it to you. Okay. Well, in a a message or something. You can send it to me. No, what you need to do. No, 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 no. no, no. That's not what you're going to do. You need to send me a picture of you first. And then you need to show me Uh the scale. I need a picture of you. I need the scale. Okay. I'm not going to show it to the world, but I need a picture. Of you. you need the scale. And then when you've hit 180, I want you to contact me. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. I'll do that. It's, it's very, very fair. Very fair. Cause I don't want to look like that. You know, I, there's a pretty lady underneath, you know what I mean? And I want to get to that lady underneath. And this is exactly how I look. I'm rooting for you. I know you are, Jason. Thank you. And I'm willing to put my money where your mouth is. So. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be waiting. Thank you very much for giving us a call. She knows the email address. Jason, you don't help nobody. Okay. Jason, you don't help nobody. Jason just, he's here to put women's down. Okay. And don't go spending on no damn pizza neither. Whatever I give you, don't don't go doing that now, damn it. Don't do that. Oh good. So glad you gave me three hundred dollars. I'm off the dominoes. No, you're not. All right, let me go ahead and get over here on Zoom, brother Kansas. I'm gonna have him hanging out for a minute like a dope fiend on the street corner. Let me see if he's still there. He might have fell asleep. Has some business to take care of here, but uh, see if I can get Brother Kansas on here, and then we're going to get back over there on Zoom. Okay, I've got Larson and Marcus up here doing the most. Let me go ahead and get that down there. All right, there goes the number on the screen. Where's my Zoom? There it is. All right. Uh, Brother Kansas. Brother Kansas, connection is kind of slow. I don't know what's going on. Brother Kansas, he had all evening to get ready for it. All right, Brother Kansas is working on it here. I'm working on it here. He's got his Zimbabwe mobile on. Guys, actually, I think I know who the hell this is. This is no damn Kansas. Not no damn Kansas. All right, get your camera on, dude. Telling you, he done moved all the way down across the damn country and still ain't got his act together. What is you doing? All right. All right. We'll come back to him. We're going to get to it. Let me get a caller from area code 702. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, my name is Regina from Las Vegas. All right. Regina from Las Vegas was on your mind. I just wanted to call in and say it's very hypocritical for women like her to go after men. Well, it's real funny. Women like her who are 50 can go after men who are 30, but yet you call Marcus Houston a predator for saying how women who are older got too much baggage and drama, et cetera. And it's just, it's sad how he gets, you said it yourself, he is the legacy of the greatest basketball player of all time. You could have had a 
better looking woman than her just on your name alone, and this is what you put up with. And for her to even talk about having a kid, it's like, ma'am, you 50. You want a kid? And here's the thing. At the end of the day, women understand that's the only thing that justifies a marriage. Marriage is about the continuation of bloodlines. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Don't let anyone mislead you. Throughout history, the only reason you use marriage is the continuity of bloodlines. That's the only reason. So that we can track who this belongs to. That's the whole point of it. So without that or barring that, there's really no justification for this marriage to take place. So every woman knows that she must at least hold out the possibility to a man that she is capable of bearing him sons, bearing him daughters. Otherwise, what's the value added to marrying her? There is no value added benefit. There isn't anything he's going to get from her married that he wasn't already going to get from her single. Therefore, there really isn't any justification. So in this case, yeah, she's doing what a lot of chicks do here. She's holding the carrot over his head that maybe these 50-year-old ovaries still got some tread left on the tires. And in reality, we all know that the best he's going to get is a damn surrogate. That's the best you're going to get. So she's pulling out all the stops. She's pulling out all the stops. At the very least, she's doing good salesmanship. Well, Jason, what do you mean by good salesmanship? She's creating doubt. Well, I would say about accentuate the positives. Even if this isn't practical or realistic, she's created doubt in his head. Maybe this could happen. Maybe if I love her enough, then we can make that work. Maybe we can. You see what I mean? If he's willing I, to extend, if he's willing to suspend disbelief, if she gasses him up long enough, and this is why she's trying to sprint down the altar, because think about the pressure that puts on him. Oh, we could do this. And I got eggs at the ready. Um, All we got to do now is, you know, get this marriage done and we good. So you see how that puts extra pressure on him. You know, if we, we hurry up and get married, we can go ahead and get married, have these kids, everything go good knowing full well that she can't really deliver on that. Oh, I see how especially the expert whole game is. It's amazing to me as a woman. And I would also like to say, watching you, I have changed so much and see my own bullshit, let alone other, well, I already knew about other women's BS, even women from other races love. I'm a black woman, and they love coming up to me, telling me how the only thing that they love with a man or a black man is his, stereotype package so yeah seeing the game that all women play is in female nature it's honestly sick sickening and to get that jordan legacy which is what billions of dollars well i mean it it could be but it's, now it's going to be like 50 cents son it's going to be like 50 cents son you know it's you have an heir but he's unworthy you have an heir but he is oh. unworthy and that, that becomes well, a real he problem. He has his other son. Well, I mean, that becomes a real problem because once you get to a certain age, you're not going to have any more kids. If you've already messed it up with the ones you got, you're not going to have any more kids. And with that being the case, that, 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 that's going to be, that's, that's, that's the kiss of death, really. Either you got this right with him and he's a worthy heir who's ready to pick up the mantle and move forward with it or you have raised a deficient heir who is about to squander everything because he can, because he doesn't actually have any real accomplishments. Now he has the same biological urges that all males have, but he is sorely lacking in any substantive accomplishments. So now, even though he comes from a very well pedigree, he's resorting to typical bum nigga tactics. He's resorting to relying on sexuality. How many women can I lay up with? How many women can I make connections to? How many women can I bed? And as a result, he, he's doing a whole bunch of bed hopping and globe trotting and accomplishing nothing. That's the problem. And now you've given him damn near unlimited power to do so. 
And this is how he chooses to use it. This is how he chooses to use it. And the killing part about it is, I guess, I guess Jordan is, when folks ask about if Jordan's got a problem with this or whatever, I guess Jordan is okay with it, or at least he's not openly in full-scale revolt. We all heard he said he, he didn't like there was, are you glad they're in a relationship together? And he said, no. But I guess he's saying, <laughs> well, at least they're not going to be able to have any kids. So at least well, if, sorry, if he like does marry this broad, at least I ain't got to worry about any grandkids coming out of it. So I don't have to worry about well, that at least. Well, like you said, um, I think a couple of videos ago, what the hell was it that you said as far as when it comes to, well, like you telling the guy with his brother, you can give advice all you want to, but at the same time, he has to take it. So Michael B. Jordan, well, Michael Jordan probably gave, gave his son advice, but if he doesn't take it, there's no. not much he can really say. Yeah, he can cut off the credit cards, et cetera. No, but no. My, Michael really Jordan, do, Marcus Jordan is the result of Michael Jordan's woman. Remember what I've taught you all. Your children will follow your example, not your advice. I don't have True. any kids, and I know this. There's a reason why I try to have a disciplined presentation to you all. Because at the, I have a lot of young kids who listen to me, teenagers and young adults. They're going to follow my example, not my advice. So if I'm not where they want to be, they're not going to listen to it. They're going to take a look at my results, not, not, my, not my platitudes. Your kids are going to follow your example, not your advice. And if they look at you, this is why women cannot be vulgar and slutty. This is why single moms usually routinely fail at raising children, specifically boys. Single moms routinely fail because they're usually slutty, nutty, vulgar, disgusting sex habits. And the boys are following her example, not her advice. She can wag her finger all she wants to about don't do X, Y, Z. He's going to follow your, your example, not your advice. Because that's what he has to live with. He has to live with the way you live, not what you say. Well, guess what? With your fathers, it's the same way. Your son is following your example, Dad. Think about this for a few moments. Jordan might have been all right with sleeping with another chick. By the way, it wasn't just one, as we all know. Now we know it wasn't just one. So Jordan might have been okay doing that. But his son's mother wasn't. Think about that for a few moments. Yeah. Jordan might have been all right doing that. Jordan, his, do you think that doing that had an effect on him seeing you do that to his mom? Do you think that had I'm an effect sure on him? So he's oh, either going to grow up learning to hate you or he's going to grow up emulating dad's example it doesn't matter whether he's at the house or not the family knows what he's doing you know how it is mama gonna be sitting there mumbling under her breath other folks in the family gonna be sitting there grumbling and murmuring it is what it is that's what's gonna happen he's going to find out what his father is really doing and he's only going to have two roads to go. I'm either going to hate my dad for doing this or I'm going to be a chip off the old block because that's the only way I can be around him and not hate him. I'm going to have to be like him. Otherwise, I'm going to have to hate him. Mom, very clearly, is not a big fan of his. So I'm either going to go her route and start hating him or I'm going to have to do something else. That, that, you've, you've trapped him. You trapped him. And you're Michael Jordan's son. Who the hell wants to give that up? So now you kind of feel Nobody. like you kind of feel like you handcuffed to the game now. Then the man puts you in. Well, he played college ball. I want to say Marcus played basketball in college. So you can see they're obviously trying to groom you. So now you in that life with a bunch of other young males. You're in that life with a bunch of other young males. So now he feels like he got to follow dad's example. I got to, because now people are no longer associating you with your mom. They're solely associating you with your dad, which means they're going to want everything else. That's it. They don't give a damn what your dad did to your mom. They want to, they want to know, are you going to fulfill our expectations? The females don't want to talk 
to you if you ain't going to try to become your father. Think about that for a few moments. I mean that. He, he's not stupid. The only reason the females talk to him is because of his association to his father. He's living life on easy mode. So if he alienates yeah. himself from his dad, the spigot gets cut off immediately because he was never a fantastic player. So now he is solely trading on his father's name. So everything he's getting now is a direct result of you, MJ's son. If he divorces himself from that, everything goes up in smoke. All the access he has, all the women bowing, all the interviews, all the praise, all the notoriety. Hell, even what little meager income he can get. It's all a direct, not indirect, direct result of his association to his father. He doesn't have a choice anymore. And he knows it. So he knows the only reason these chicks are talk, the only reason Larsa Pippen is in my face is my dad. I can't di divorce myself from that. My father is the only reason any of you hoes talking to me. You wouldn't give me the time of damn day or fart on me as you pass by if it weren't for my dad. So I better milk this and use this for all it's damn worth. Hell no. Mom's so sorry he did that, you know, but it's got to charge that to the game. And I'm trying to, I'm, trying to sure. I'm trying to be my father's heir, at least socially. And the problem is we can clearly see what was left out. We can clearly see what was left missing. Whole hunks and chunks. Now you done brought Scottie Pippen's broad home. You can't even, Michael Jordan can't even get away from the damn NBA and the family. He done brought the damn, then brought the NBA rivalry to the damn house with him. And by the way, nobody else has ever said this that I've heard. I don't think that was accidental on Marcus's part. I don't. I don't think Marcus did that accidentally. I think Marcus did that deliberately. I think this is his way of rubbing his father's face in it. Anything his father didn't do, anything his father let him down about, anything his father did to his mom, any animosity he's harbored. How in the world is this not humiliating your dad? I think he's doing this specifically Lamont, because it does. No, come on. Scotty Pippen's wife is humiliating him. But Marcus Jordan ain't humiliating Scotty. Marcus looks like a big ass simp. But who he is humiliating is his dad. So Larsa is trolling her ex-husband. But Marcus seems to be trolling his father. Yeah, you did all that. You put all that on me and everything. But I'm just going. I'm going in a different direction. Yeah, I know you don't want me to fool with her. Yeah, I know you don't. That's why I'm doing it. Because I'm being my own man. You see what I mean? independence i'm gonna be my own man i know you don't want me fooling with her that's why i'm gonna keep her around because that's me making my own choice they ain't you making the choice for me the more you try to get her get him away from her, the more he's gonna try to pull on her because he's got a grudge or an axe to grind with you he he has to be your son but at the same time he resents you so you see your exactly. animosity with pippin he hasn't adopted your animosity with pippin that's the problem. So he has no problem laying between the legs of the same woman that Scottie Pippen was laying up with for a decade because he's disassociated himself. He's holding a grudge and he wants to show you, yeah, you're my dad, but I resent you. And when you think and about it, that makes... going to backfire on him because Lois Pippen, no. No. No, she got him now. I mean, and he's... No. Think about this for a few moments. Did any of us even know Marcus was still alive before that woman showed up? So no. what does this no. what does this <laughs> remind what does this remind you of? Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. He did. I told y'all oh. about that. Yeah. Prince Harry was a nobody. He was in his brother's shadow. He's second in line for the throne. Everyone is looking at William. Harry's not in line for nothing unless William gets hit by a bus. Harry's not in line for anything. And everyone knows it. He's just the backup in case a piano falls on his brother. But that's all. And everyone knows it. So 
He's like, well, what am I supposed to do? Then this chick comes along and all of a sudden he's like, well, hell, if I can't be famous, I'll be infamous. There's a lot of folk like that. Take a look at Marcus Jordan. Hell, y'all wouldn't let me be famous. I can't be a basketball player. I know you're all looking at me as a bust in sports. I know you're looking down on me. If I can't be famous, I'll be infamous. Here we are. One hell of a way to go out. Well, I mean, as long as far as she's concerned, you might be like, I'm going out on my own terms. At least I'm going out on my own terms. Well, sadly, like you said, that's going to backfire on him. Marissa Pinson, like you said, she'll make a pit stop. You 50 years old doing the OnlyFans. Ma'am, you got, and there was something about her sleeping with one of her son's teammates. Oh, yeah. I mean, this, this heifer has spent the last, she, she said what she meant. My dad gave me everything. She ain't trying to work. She is not trying to do an honest day's work. She wants to be taken care of at a very high expensive level for the remainder of her days. That is her mission in life, period, point blank, in discussion, debutante syndrome. As far as his son being with this woman, he has brought a snake and a viper in there. And it appears at this point that he is hell bent for leather to make every conceivable mistake with her possible to merge himself to her. And I am simply reminded of the words of the old wizard from the last unicorn. King Haggard, I would not be you for all the world. You have let your doom in through the front door, but it will not leave that way. Thank you very much for giving us a call. Let me get a call from area code 347. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? What's going on, uh, Jason? This is Lex from New York, Brooklyn, New York. All right, Lex from Brooklyn. What's on your mind? I actually had a situation that happened a couple of months ago, and I, it's so funny that you're talking about this. But um, I was talking to a 40 – I'm 30, by the way. But I was talking to a 43-year-old. Nothing happened between us. But um, So she came down, and we were talking for a good nine months, but it was a nightmare. So – Essentially, my question is, do you feel like older women starting in their 40s start to have contempt for young men, especially juxtaposed to the situation with Larissa and Marcus? Do you feel like she has any form of contempt? No. And where do you think that stems from? No, that's okay. that's okay. Now, remember, you're talking to somebody who all of my girlfriends were significantly older than me throughout my 20s and my early 30s. So, I mean, I'm talking about starting in high school. So my girlfriends were always significantly older than me. Once I got in my 20s, I had girlfriends who were 10, 15, and a couple who were 20 years older than me. But my the whole thing for me was that I felt that females my age were not mature enough, and they weren't. And um, I liked the things that older women had. You know, they were more established in life, and most guys consider that to be boring because they're dealing with more serious things. But I was a more serious person, so that was fine by me. But there was one caveat to that. Never in my mind did it ever mm-hmm. cross my imagination that I would marry any of them. Not even for a second. I wanted to treat them respectfully. I wanted them, you know, to have all the nice experiences they could. But I had no intention whatsoever of marrying a single one of them. Not even once. As a matter of fact, I only just, it only came up with a couple of them. It was only when they were pressing me with the, where's the relationship going thing. And I'm like, the relationship's already where they need to be. So as a young man, that's the way we see things. So what the females are looking for Mm -hmm. is to find a guy. If she's an older female, it is always, always, always 100% of the time. Always females are always looking for a male who is her age or older biologically speaking, socially speaking, she knows that she gets no boost and she gets no benefit from getting a guy younger than her. None. So when you see a female trying to snuggle up with a dude who is younger than her, what happened? She has failed at getting a man in her age group who should be similarly established to take a chance on her. Now, if they do, they try to go find some helpless old dude. Shout out Anna Nicole Smith. Oh, there's plenty of chicks out here. They go look for some helpless sugar daddy and try to figure out, can I spring a baby on him and trap him? 
But if she's too old to make that happen, like Larsa Pippen, now we got to go see if we can find a younger male that we can enchant. Let me see if he thinks an older female, what if he's still telling himself in his head that he's much younger than he is, or he's immature, and he sees an older female as a status symbol, and he doesn't realize that that has mm. already run out. She's found it. Now, do they resent the younger man? No, they do not resent him unless he doesn't give her what she wants. Because the truth of the matter is, the only reason she's giving you the time of day is because you're supposed to be her bailout package. You're the best she could do. You're all she could get. So a woman will tolerate that as long as the fella gives her what she needs. Well, if you if you bow down and give me what I want, I'll tolerate it with a minimum of punishing your ass. But as far as resentment, she's not going to resent you unless you stop giving her what she needs or what she wants. Now she's going to resent you. And here's the problem. The problem is it's going to be very, 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 very difficult for you to give her what she wants because what she wants is status. That is what an older female wants. She wants status. A younger male can practically never deliver that kind of thing. I mean, unless you get somebody who's some young life curmudgeon like me, like I was, but other, but I'm, but I'm an outlier. Hey, I'm an outlier, dude. I'm an outlier. I am yeah, not the yeah. rule at all. I'll tell y'all right now, Jason Black is not the rule. If y'all looking for the average fella to be like me, you is stuck because that's not the way it is. And even me, when I was in my 20s, I wasn't trying to marry them. I'm like, hey, I, ultimately, I was trying to do the same thing. I'm going to ride this until it runs out mm -hmm. and then, eh, on to the next. So an older female, she's out of options. She resents the men in her age group. Those, That's who she resents. She doesn't resent this younger mm -hmm. fella. She resents her circumstances and she resents the guys in her age group. Now, ultimately... If he fails to make, because as far as she's concerned, look, remember I told you all, unspoken female assumption number two is that you're going to make up for all, everything that her exes didn't do. So guess what? She's approaching Marcus now, presenting him with the bill. Here's the bill for Future and Scotty and everyone else. That makes a lot of sense, Jason. And what, this won't follow up question, so... The situation with that 43-year-old, like, as soon as she started trying to pull rank on me, like, oh, you don't keep your word, and oh, um, we got to start thinking about if this is going to work out long term, should I sell my apartment, do you come move in with me up in Canada? It was a mess, Jason. So I just ultimately thought she just hated men and black men because she was kind of like that. I can do all bad by myself kind of energy. So I just Okay, well, slow, slow down. Slow, 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 slow down. Slow down now. <laughs> Was she black, though? She is black. Is she black or kind of black? She's Caribbean. She was West Indian. Okay. Well, like, does she have any kids? Nah. Unmarried, no kids. Just a lot of a trail of bad relationships. Okay, well, like so, I say, she was supposed to, uh, she was, you were supposed to fill in them gaps. Like I said, they don't resent you. You're supposed to be the insurance policy. They resent their yeah. exes. They resent their situation. And they're only going to resent you if she presents you with that bill and you don't respond the way Marcus has. Now she's going to resent you, even though it's irrational, even though it's impractical, even though it makes no sense. You didn't rack up this bill, but she's presenting you with the bill that all these other people racked up based on the assumptions that she made of what she should have gotten for them. Now she wants you to make good on all of that. And that brings us to the next issue. The females, older females tend to see, tend to see a younger male as a possible meal ticket, because like I said, your runway of productivity is a lot longer than hers. Right now, she's trying to get the benefits in the bag. So you see, if she's 40 something and you're 30 or 20 something, she's thinking to herself, okay, what's his trajectory? Because if she's making 80,000 a year, but right now you're making 50, she's like, well, if I lean on his ass for the next couple of years, he'll be making 150. And I can just sit back and soak up the benefits because you got to remember, she's looking at the clock far differently than you. 
she realizes yeah. that she's come to the end of her viability. The phone has stopped ringing. Her body body parts ain't sitting up tight like they used to. The men are speaking with their actions, not their words. Ain't nobody offering to buy or anything of any substance. Everybody's just trying to figure out, is there some easy sex on the table? But nobody's offering any type of commitment. So she's hoping that the younger fellow whose sex is new to you doesn't discriminate between mm. a female who is 22 or a female who is 62. That's what an older female is counting on, that you won't make any distinction. Just so long as she's willing to throw them legs open, you'll pay the same price no matter what the age of the female and that you're not thinking critically. That's what she's hoping and calculating for. Problem, you younger fellas got too many Jason Blacks talking to y'all today. And you're not, there are not nearly as many of you who are as gullible and clueless as they need you to be. See, the civil rights generation and the baby boomer generation, those are a bunch of feckless simps. Half of my generation was the same thing. We get to y'all's and the numbers start thinning out tremendously, which is why the females are doing so much screaming and yelling nowadays. You are a more savvy generation of males. You might not be as rich. You might not be as productive. You might not be as affluent, but you're more savvy on balance than the cats older than you are. You're not falling for as many simple, stupid tricks as they fell for. Don't get me wrong. There's some of y'all still falling for it, but not the numbers that the women really need so that they can be predators getting over on this generation of prey. That's what's not happening. So you guys are not making as much money, mm -hmm. but in many cases you're like, why do I need to do that to take care of myself? To which they're hitting you over the head. Hey, you should be trying to take care of me too. And you're like, why? You got your able body. Why would I, why would I want to do that? So what we're seeing here is a difference in values and they haven't incentivized you to adopt a disadvantageous system of values. Now, mm -hmm. now she's going to start resenting you because you have failed to meet her expectations. She needs you to value her like that because let's just be honest, Larsa Pippen ain't got nothing to offer today. Other than some half a century year old sex, what's Larsa Pippen offering? Larsa mm. Pippen doesn't even offer status upgrades. She offers infamy. She offers scandal. She doesn't offer status. She offers scandal. And when a man, a man in his 40s and 50s ain't looking for a scandal. So when you think about it, it's like, hey, baby, you, anything that she can offer, you know, you not you think, you know, you can get better quality on something 15, 20 years younger. But and Larsa is still talking about damn me G wagons and, and, and McLaren's. At 50, almost 50, 49. Think about that mm. for a few moments. So to a younger cat who, who can't afford that right now to begin with, those are intangible things. Those are hypotheticals. But to a man who's got his paper straight and he's built, he's looking at his bank account. Well, yeah, I can buy you a G-Wagon. That's going to be a big bite on my finances. And he's asking himself what I've told all y'all. The man is asking himself now, how much in femininity are you bringing me? What is the value? What's the feminine value I'm getting from you? I'm getting the 50 year old body that's been well worn by many a nigga. That's worth half a million. Cause I, I got together with my CBA and we did the calculus. And said, eh, we need to knock a couple zeros off that. With her, think about this for a moment. Larsa Pippen is older than she's ever been. She is more worn than she's ever been. And she's demanding more than she ever has. This is the natural cycle when it comes to older females, whether they're dealing with older men or younger men. She's older than she's ever been. She's more worn than she's ever been. And she's demanding more than she ever has. So yeah, she's looking to see which one of y'all is going to start delivering benefits. This chick came from the Caribbean. You're up there in New York. So there's plenty of them up there like that. Yeah, she's like, hey, I, I didn't get it cracking where I was from. I'm here in America. I'm in the most expensive damn city in America. I need this young fella here. And by the way, you were not the only one she was talking to. That's a fact. I believe it too. And by the way, before I go any further, by the way, you were not the only one she was talking to because you see, she can't head, she needs to hedge her bets. She can't just pull all her chips on one of you. So she got to sprinkle them draws far and wide and hopefully the law of averages will work out 
and one of you younger fellows will, or older, whoever it is gets sprung first is the winner. If you want to call that winning, whoever gets sprung first, he's the one who wins. But she can't, she can't sit there and wait for just you. That, that, that won't work. So it's, it's, as far as she's concerned, she's setting off a foot race. And whoever gets there first, they win. I would tell young men I would tell young men this. As a young man, if you don't want nothing out of life, man, go get you an older chick and make it today, whatever. If you don't want anything. But if you are a person who actually wants something out of life, you're also gonna want a legacy. And an older female is bringing tons of baggage. She doesn't want to get with your program. She wants you to get on hers. And her program is to make up for all the men who are her age or older that she didn't get what she wanted from it. So it will constantly be this battle with her for dominance. Because she is more slick than you. She's more savvy than you. She's been through way more things than you. She's seen a whole lot more. This is the problem. Even if you two are the same age, I try to remind guys about this. A 25-year-old female has seen a lot more than a 25-year-old male has. She's had more sex partners, usually older. She's had more life experiences, usually grimier. So by the time you two get 26, 27, 28 years old, she's got a lot more baggage than you do as a male. A lot more relationship baggage. So... It takes time before men have enough, males have enough experiences before they catch up to that and get gamed up and got a handle on it. So if you're dealing with a female who's 15, 20 years older than you, think about how much of an edge she has on you experience wise. I say that to say, by the way, you don't know what she will do to even out the odds. You don't have a clue what she's willing to do. She's sitting there smiling at you and thinking to herself, I got to get this little young nigga before he gets me. I got to get him before he gets me. And she's not going to tell you any of this. She's going to just going to show you when things don't go her way. So uh, for a young fella, you have got to be very, very solid. You have to be very, very clear of what it is you want. If all you want is a physical relationship, you need to be very, very clear about that. You can tell her up front. She's going to say she agrees to it. She doesn't, but she's going to tell you she does. And at least you can leave with a clean conscience, but don't expect to get out the game clean. She's lying. She wants a relationship. She wants a commitment. Eventually, she's going to lean on you for it. When that starts happening, the monkey is on your back and she's not going to get off. Not now, not ever. Mm -hmm. So when the older female starts ragging you about where's the relationship going, just understand the sun is setting. This relationship is about to end. I don't know if it's going to end in a week or in a year, but it's on its way out now. Because she's now she's revealing her true motives and she's not going to let this go. She thought you would be easier going and more malleable and manipulatable, and you're not. So now it's like, okay, you're not going to do with that. Now she's just either going to nag you or she's going to try to punish you. If she starts nagging, you're probably going to stop it. And if she tries to punish you, you're damn sure going to stop it. So like I say, when that starts happening, the relationship is effectively over. If you want to marry her, I guess that's okay. If you don't want any kids of your own, then that'll work. She better be a hell of a woman because you're giving up a hell of a lot. But just get it through your mind that she's not really trying to have no kids with you. Especially if she had kids already, she doesn't want any more. And if she hasn't, you're, it's a crapshoot. So the odds of her leaving you actually become exponential. If you're increasing your value as time goes on, that's the only thing that could possibly save you. But you'd have to be a guy who's well aged beyond your years and is ready to deal with that. And 99.999% of you are not. So with that being the case, it practically can never work. A younger female is looking for different things from an older man than a younger male is looking for from a female and an older male is looking for different things from a younger female than an older female is looking for from a younger male and ultimately you won't you won't be able to do it not really if you are you will be the gross exception to the rule well usually turn out that she's going to start punishing you later either that or she's going to give up altogether now, that one can happen. It's rare, but it happens too, where she just says, screw it, I'm giving up. And she's just like, whatever this nigga offers, she's going to take it. But generally speaking, that's you wouldn't get with her if she wasn't looking kind of fly. And the female who's looking kind of good wants something. She don't want to sit down. She wants something. Yeah. Yeah, she she was. She, she did. She did. 
Um, yeah, thank you so much for the solid game, Jason. Like, you're doing a great service to the community, man. I really appreciate all you're doing. I really do. Thank you very much for getting this call tonight. We appreciate that. Like I say, man, I was in those shoes. I've been that guy. I've been that dude. I know what that is like. Not for one or two years. I know what that's like for the better part of a, I mean, for a decade and a half. I know what that's like. Actually, more than a decade and a half. Damn near two decades. I know what that's like. So I know how it's going to end. I experienced it a bunch of times. I told y'all about that before. I'm 27 years old. She's 43, 44 years old. And when I first met her, I'm like, hey, look, I just got out of a long-term relationship. I'm not really trying to do anything really serious. I'm not really trying to get serious with nobody. I'm just looking to chill, take it easy. And she sits there and looks at me. We had that conversation more than once. She's just sitting there bobbing her head. Oh, absolutely, yes. I'm not looking for nothing serious, blah, 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 blah. Six months later, not a year, not eight months, not seven, six months later, she is ragging me. Jason, where is this relationship going? I'm not getting any younger. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, but I told you what, what the deal was. I said that. I said what the deal was. And I told you, I never forgot what she said. Because she gave that young man a wake-up call. I never forgot what she said. She said, yeah, I know what I said, but... I was 27 when I heard those words. I was 27 when a chick told me after, you all know how concrete I am. I laid out the law more than once, said exactly what it was. She agreed to it, agreed to it a bunch of times. And then six months later, she looked me dead in my eye. And I said, wait a minute, but we talked about this. You know what you said? I know what I said, but, and I'm sitting there thinking, I'm so damn glad I ain't married to you. I have no kids with you. Because females give themselves the right to change their word, lie, look you in the face. Well, if it ain't to my advantage, oh well. Fellas, come on now. And with an older chick, think about that for a few moments. If I had been a dumbass who had gotten her pregnant or gotten her married, can you imagine where my life would be today? She'd have her hooks into me to this day. She'd be trying to retire off of me. So I can tell these young men, and by the way, she wasn't the last one. Truth be told, she wasn't the first one. Truth be told, she was the one I remember most. But truth be told, she wasn't the first. She wasn't the first and she wasn't the last one. That's how I can tell these young men, hey, fellas, this is what it's going to be. This is what it's going to be. I don't care where she's from. Women are the same all over the earth. Wherever she's from, this is... They're looking for the same benefits package and they got where they are for the same reason. If a woman is marriage material, men take her off the market young in life. If she getting long in the damn tooth, there are problems. She's got baggage. The baggage isn't going to vanish and disappear and sm like smoke. It's not going to do that. She's going to try to convince you that it isn't. It doesn't work that way. A young man an older female is for recreational purposes. Y'all hang out. Y'all have a good time. Older females got game. Go ahead and go with her. She had, had a whole bunch of niggas take her to a lot of exotic locations where she got run through. Nigga, she's there to, to update your files. She's there to upgrade and update your files. Join me and I will complete your training. Go with her to some of the places. Go to Cancun. Go to Australia. Go do that. When you're young, she's been there before. It's like, okay, good. If she looks good and everything, that's great. You got something nice to go with. And she's for practice. She's for practice until something you can actually invest in comes along. A 30-year-old man ain't supposed to be running around with a 50-year-old female. Hey, go globe trot with her. Visit exotic locales. Go to some restaurants. Eat some food you ain't ever ate before. Go ahead and do your thing. And then when you get done with that, you update your files. It's like, okay, now as far as where I'm going to invest, 
What investment is a 30-year-old male going to make in a 50-year-old female? It's going to be all down, all upside for her, all downside for you. She can take benefits from you, but she can't add to the pot. She can't. Don't lie to her. Don't mistreat her. Don't do her wrong. Tell her exactly what the deal is. You know she's going to renege on it later. So it's like, okay, well, I know it's coming, but don't get her pregnant. Don't get her married. And just recognize what it is. She had her chance. Right now, she's looking for a bailout. What I'm saying is that bailout will come at your expense. Now, if that's who you want to be, fine. But if you ain't looking to go out that way and you're like, hey, I still my best days are still ahead of me. See, Larsa Pippen has performed the same Jedi mind trick that so many females do when they get her age and they've aged out. She's coming to this young man talking about all of her exes and how bad they were. And what that's supposed to do psychologically is that's supposed to turn her crisis into your crisis. Now you Captain save -a But that's the real game. This is a crisis of Larsa Pippen's making. She spent the last 30 years creating this boondoggle. This is her crisis. But you found a dumb simp who's allowed you to force him to believe that your crisis is now his crisis. That he's got to save you. Now you believe that you two are in this together and that y'all are a team. When she's literally telling you I'm on the team and I, I intend to do nothing for my teammate. He's going to do everything for me and I'm going to do nothing for him. And Marcus can sit up here and act like that's a great idea until she presents him with the bill. Because he's already letting you know his pockets ain't infinitely deep. So it's like, eh, it'll go to a certain point. But she's going to be like, oh, I'm, I'm here to lick the plate clean. I'm here to suck this thing dry. I'm here to empty the vault. I'm here to get everything. And oh yeah, one more thing. I reserve the right to change my mind at any time. Now that's the part that he doesn't understand. He's actually telling himself that she's dealing with him in good faith. When we all know this woman doesn't believe in honesty. She believes, I, I, If things don't work out, I get to change my mind anytime I want to. Anytime. Anytime. We all know that's the way she operates. She, whenever I, if things don't work out, I got the right to jump to another fella anytime I choose. Right now, she's better off just marrying dudes and grabbing what she can get. She's getting whatever little severance she can get from Scotty. Then she's going to grab whatever she can get from dude. And then she's going to grab whatever she hop to the next fella. If, if there's still some tread left on the tire, she'll hop to the next one. If she can. If she can. Caller Mary Code 716, you're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Caller from area code 716, you're on live. Okay, Caller from area code 716 has been abducted. They were there, then they weren't. UFO alien sighting. Tonight's program has been a warning to the younger men about older women. Sex isn't new to females. Females enter the world of sexuality no matter how they look, no matter how they built. Y'all saw Icy called in. There's somebody willing to take, take you for a stroll. Females enter the world of sexuality young. The fellas are struggling for sex. The female sex is a given for them at a young age. So you see, sex gets old for females far sooner than it gets old for you. Sex is still new to you by the time sex is, is not old for her yet, but it's routine. So while sex is still routine for her, it's brand new to you. 
an older female is betting that sex is still new to you at 20, 25, 30, even 35. She's gambling that sex is still new to you. And if she thinks that sex is still new to you, she's going to be like, oh, okay, well, let me see what I can get over with. Let me see how far I can take this. Let me see how much dollar value he puts on it. And you see, a smart female like Larsa Pippen understands the way you use sex is by not giving it. Once you finally learn, you get the fella to desire you and then you don't give him sex or if you do you make him work hand over fist for it so now he's putting in all this work and all this effort to get it so he's putting value on how much effort he put in not how good the experience actually was or if it was worth it now he's succumbed to the sunk loss fallacy because if a fella had to buy you a chanel bag and a mercedes s class to get some sex as far as he's concerned, well, I'll be damned. She owes me about $150,000 worth of sex and companionship. She owes me about 150 G's worth. And you are going to spend the rest of your damn life chasing that $150,000 worth of sexuality. That's the problem. And so goes the tale of Marcus Jordan and Larsa Pippen. Do you all even need my help to predict how this ends? We're going to go ahead and wrap things up here tonight. If you are new here to the business, welcome to the program that all your favorite YouTubers love to hate. Watch, click that red subscribe button, click that yellow notification bell. Join us each and every time that we're here. If you haven't joined our Patreon, you definitely want to go ahead and check that out. Got a couple of things coming up here. Y'all seen what I've done in the last couple of months. Got some more coming here as well. So keep your eyes and your ears open. We will be doing the damn thing. I want to thank everyone who has contributed to support tonight's program on PayPal, Cash App, Super Chat, or Venmo. Big shout out here to my man Cornell. Thank you very much for your support. We appreciate that. GMAC and everyone else who's contributed to the program here tonight. We appreciate that. Thank you all for tuning in live or recorded. Thank you for liking, subscribing, and sharing. And this concludes this broadcast of the business. I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, Mr. Jason Black. And until next time, my brothers and my sisters from around the world, remember, handle your business or your business will handle you.